Prophecy TV guys and I'm your host Jay Taylor and today we have a live broadcast as Jamaica is slated to play Brazil in an international friendly game. This game will be a game that Jamaica has to come out all guns blazing. As you know, Jamaica hasn't played Brazil for a long time. I remember growing up, Jamaica used to play Brazil in the, um, the Gold Cup when Brazil was an invitational team. And this would be a huge game for Jamaica. However, I think this is also a risky game for Jamaica because one of my fears going into the Gold Cup is I don't want Jamaica playing against teams that we could potentially get beat by a lot of goals and that damages the morale of the team. But however, I do welcome all competition. And if Jamaica is going to take that next step to the next level, Jamaica has to start playing teams like Brazil if we want to make that next big jump into the world of football. No, Coach Jaime Hall Grimson. Oh, my God. I, I imagine for this coach, his first few games for Jamaica, his first game for Jamaica, Argentina, Cameroon. Um, he has played Mexico, Trinidad. And, and now he's slated to play Brazil. It doesn't start bigger than that. So this also tells me that Coach Jaime Algrims is ready for any level of competition. He's ready to take Jamaica to the next level. Previously, coaches would want to play the Bar like Bahamas, Barbados, Cayman Islands. This is where I wanted Jamaica football to get to. This is the teams that I wanted Jamaica to play against. No more playing against Grenada and those little teams to prepare us for competition. We're also slated to play Honduras. Um, let's just remind the fans that these games are not confirmed. Today, this was reported on Eurosport, and Eurosport seems to be quite credible um, as they publish international friendlies. And the JFF has been a bit quite tight-lipped about releasing the details on this game. And we know how the JFF rolls. The JFF tends to just hold things back for the last um, um, minutes of this game. Yes, steadily, uh, based on my information, Demari Gray is ready to go. Steadily, um, I'm going to drop the link because me and you haven't chopped it up on stream before. Feel free to join the show, man. Um, let me get your take on the game, Teddy Lee. Based on the last information I had that Demari Gray had his passport. However, the JFF wanted the coach to make the announcement. The JFF didn't want to jump the gun and make the announcement. They wanted the coach to basically announce the player as the coach was a part of the recruiting process. Paul Hall started the recruiting process. But Coach Jaime Hargrimson went to the UK and basically solidified the, 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 the proposal to the player and confirmed with the player, like, listen, we need you to be a part of the setup and now we need you to get on board. Now, how does Jamaica shape up against, the United, um, against um, Brazil? Because this will be one of the games that prepares us for the game against the United States. For all the people in the reggae boys football world that believes that you need to enjoy the game without the football, this is the game for you because Jamaica won't be having a lot of the football. If you enjoy watching a one-sided encounter, this will be the game where Jamaica will be chasing the football. But I think there are some pluses and some upsides and some positives in this for Jamaica. No. Jamaica will have to learn to hold on to football when they do get possession of the football. This is not a game that Jamaica can be wasteful, where you get the football and you just do something that's just nonchalant or just out of character and lose the football because it's Brazil. Brazil will punish you. Let me put down my headphone. Brazil will punish you with the football or without the football. Um, yeah, man. All right, guys, we have Teddy Lee Gray on screen here. 
Um, you can you hear me, Teddy Lee? Yeah, man, me hear you, man, you know? Yeah, all right, Teddy Lee. Um, welcome to the show, man. I'm glad to have you on. We never really get to chop it up um, about football because we know you, you have your unorthodox um, opinions just like I do. So it's going to be a pretty interesting discussion, people. Teddy Lee Grace here with us. What do you have to say on the game, Teddy Lee? Yeah, man, first and foremost, uh, big up yourself. And, you know, I'm, glad, I'm happy that you build a channel. I'm subscribe to it. I'm yeah. glad at least you build a channel. And, you know, I yeah, it yeah. grow fast, you know. So I'm glad yeah. for see that. And before Raymond. you continue, Teddy Lee, honestly, you subscribing to my channel, bro, was one of the, like, the most exciting things for me. And, like, a lot of people probably don't understand this, what it means. For me, like, I believe that Jamaica... Jamaicans and Jamaica has to get to a place where we can disagree about things but still respect what each other is trying to do because I also watched how you represent yourself on that interview when you were representing the security guards and this is why I didn't run out and just judge you based on what people were just trying to say, Yo, Teddy Lee, come on and say you were doing things in a professional realm that you didn't wear it on a t-shirt on the internet but people didn't know that including myself so that's why i say you have to even respect the man that's pushing a handcart in jamaica or anywhere around the world because you never know what that person has going on in their life so continue man sorry for that whole <laughs> introduction <thing. laughs> yeah man i'm not so people supposed to know the history with me are you know you know so <laughs> you know but i think we always agree with most things about that we, we disagree with few items you know yeah, but yeah. as I said, sometimes people don't know we like maybe I maybe I'll carry self like we'll carry self quote unquote like lack of knowledge. So people maybe think we're an idiot, you know. But yeah. I just say go. But um with the Brazil match, I think maybe this are the first time and maybe ten no, we played them what 2015 was the last time. What's it done? Copa? Copa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I didn't see how they play. No, I don't. I don't. Yo, Teddy, the last time I remember Jamaica playing Brazil. I thought I was a two. <laughs> Yo. I think, I yeah, because you remember. I think remember they scored a free kick. They were there. What the ball are there named? Roberto Carlos. I think yeah. maybe that at the last match. I don't know. No, I don't believe that at the last match still. But. Remember when Juna Bayano, uh, when him did Brook, I did Brook tap, um, tap a nose or something. <laughs> I don't remember, bro. <laughs> But remember how much my friend, I remember how much the the goal where Roberto Carlos score is swirling, you know. I think a two one when they lose a match or something, you know. Remember, you know? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I think Brazil are carry a strong squad if, if the match is official, and I think hopefully we see them are great. Reese Nelsons and some other players, you know. Would I love to see Lewis Baker still? Can we have a stadium issues? Yeah, we know John Russell will come play my role, but we need a backup, you know. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. the match I got interesting. And do us now. Maybe we can use um our everything I play in England now. Why are the venue for the match? Well, all right, hold on Teddy Lee. This is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it like a, a proper show. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna question you on specific points and you elaborate because we don't want to give it all away in one take. I mean, also your brain a fly and you want to get it all out there. <laughs> all right, so yeah, man. This, this is how we're gonna do it now, Teddy Lee. Jamaica versus a potential Brazil. We know that Brazil is a team that is all about ball possession. They trigger that attacking play very quickly. Um, who do you think Jamaica would should um, approach a game like Brazil? All right. So I think we should approach a match. Um, Mr. Algrimso style of play, the 4 4 2. Okay. 4-4-2, and is this a, a counter-attacking style of play? Whoa, sorry. Maybe, yeah, man, so maybe less, um, few ball possession, but we're going to be effective when we have the ball. I don't believe we're supposed to play for kind of out player, out player Brazil. <laughs> right now, due to the players that we we'll just get, we have mm. to play the coach style of play. So, we know the people that want at least if we have the ball, 50 and 60 percent of the ball position, but right now that's not so practical based on maybe some of the new players that are coming in. So I think mm -hmm. we need the 4 4 2 system. Yes, we like three at the back, but I think the coach currently I use the 4 4 2 system. 
would you say that isn't this a game that Jamaica should, if the game is confirmed and everything is a go, as you know, the, the, you can look for the game and you can look on the Eurosports um, website. They have published the game and they seem quite credible. Guys, go check out Eurosports.com. That's where the game has been published. So this is not something that just came out of thin air. So, no, Teddy Lee, wouldn't you think this is a game that if Jamaica is playing against Brazil, we should go out there and just go out there fearless and not care about the results and just express ourselves and see what we need to work on? All right. So, um, yes, we're going to express ourselves, but I think result is very important. Like, uh, currently, we're getting some big teams, you know, to play. So we have to be mindful of the FIFA ranking. You know, we at least have to remind, remember remember that. Yes, I know the Algrims are maybe going to get some small teams in the future, but we're mm -hmm. supposed to think about our FIFA ranking. So try to limit the score at least to one or two versus Brazil. That That mm -hmm. is my opinion. Not to try to attack Brazil and get 8 nil like what mm -hmm. France did with the last time. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, but wait, Tilly, you don't think that is counterproductive for our um, preparation, though? Because if you go into the game and you're too conservative and you're too cagey because you're playing Brazil, will, will you be able to explore the things that you want to work on to play the United States? All right. So currently, I think the coach is working on the defensive um, um we call it a defensive part of the team right now. Mm -hmm. That you know, maybe in the future attacking, but right now, defensive part. So yeah, Argentina gave us three. Mm -hmm. And I will never look bad against um Argentina. Mm -hmm. And you know, so I think the coach are continuing with the same system. As we said, the three the four, four, two. And my play, I think we need some defense. Uh Bobby Reed at the right, doing him job as a right winger, but on the left. We need a defensive-minded player. We see him try taxi up there, but we don't know if that can work. Yes, yes. Um, let, 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 now that you touched on the whole Bobby Ray thing, um, Teddy Lee, let me just um, segue into that. Jamaica is shaping up to look like a team that has a lot of depth at the wing position. How many wingers would you call up for this game? Because just take a look here. We have a Demari Gray, a Leon Bailey, a Bobby Reed. A Jamalo, a Omari Hutchins, a, a, um, a Kahim Paris, and a Ronaldo Cephas. So, who, who would have been your wingers? All right, so <laughs> when I bring four, four wingers um, in the midfield, so when I bring basically, if it's a 23 man squad, mm. three goalkeepers, eight defenders, and eight midfielders, and four forwards. Now, I think we don't pick Leon Bailey in that squad as a forward in the four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But on the wing, Demar Gray, Bobby Reed. Where is Maybe we'll get Reese Nelson. No, Reese Nelson, uh, as far as what I've learned, is that Reese Nelson, they had diffi a difficult time getting in touch with the player. And they were supposed, someone was supposed to get in touch with him on Friday. I don't know if it was, no, I did the stream on Friday, I think on Saturday over the weekend. And then they, they passed the number on to the head coach. So I don't know if they had made any contacts with him. So Reese Nelson Papers is not in or anything like that. However, in that international friendly, maybe it's a situation where the player is allowed to play. Because if both FAs um, agree, right, he can play without the passport. Yeah, yeah, because that more I know, the match is, the match official or what? It would be in a FIFA window because the FIFA window starts on the 12th of June and the game would have been on the 13th. Uh, because show me seen at the past, we say we are players, player, like for example, the Catalonia match, we know mm -hmm. some of the players have all them documents. Yeah. yeah. But show them say Catalonia no, is not a uh, them so they're not too registered. So therefore, maybe that's why they're allowed. But against Brazil, no, I think Brazil are going to want um, every player. You're not eligible because I think they might take the match serious. But you remember, one to them FIFA you, remember, you remember when Jamal Lowe and, and Andre Gray and those guys played their first game and Casey Palmer, they didn't have their Jamaican passport against the United States. You remember? Yeah, I th yeah, I think the US, US that, yeah, that's what I, mean, I say. Brazil, I don't know if Brazil and US, US, I think US 
and other, some other countries will say yes, come play, and then we'd have some agreement with the, F, the other FA, Jamaica FA. But um, right. Brazil, maybe Brazil will do the same thing. That would be All good because right. at least we don't like to see the Reese and some other players, you know. All right, Teddy Lee, let me just read a few comments. Let me just welcome everybody again to Sports Prophecy TV, guys, where football lives. And let me just read a few comments. Um, here, bless up. This is Tyrone. Let me just throw up a few comments on the screen. Um, Mr. United says it might not be true. Um, Chevron says we shouldn't be playing against no Brazil, that's way too much. So Make sure you stick a pin to that point, um, Teddy Lee, for the fans who think that this is a bit a big stretch for us to be punching above our weight class here. Um, Dre Anyweather Sports says we lost in 2003 to Brazil 1 0. Um, Sports Anyweather says big up fans. Um, Mr. Um, United said, based on what MM said on his show today, it might not be Brazil, okay, but. If the website listen first, the, the report came out that it was supposed to be Chile, and the JF was also trying to basically play back that game against Uruguay that we were slated to play. I thought when the group came out and USA was in the group and Nicaragua, Jamaica should have adjusted who were going to play and play opponents that would have prepared us for that game. So I think as well, we know there is a report that came out in the um newspaper this week that the coach and the head of the jff has been having a tug of war as to the date and the schedule scheduling of the friendly games because the jff wants to just have the two friendlies by just getting them for the coach but the coach wants to have the games at a specific time to give the players enough time to recover and, and then learn, know what he learned from the games and then go back to the drawing board and prepare. And I have so much respect for the coach for this because if this was another coach or maybe a local coach, him say, yeah, man, you give it too friendly, make we take them. But he's not, they, the coach wouldn't take into consideration is that you need to play those friendlies, go back and watch the tape, and then you go back out and work on what you think the players should work on and in your preparation. So I agree with the coach that you don't want to play your friendlies too close to the game against the U.S. That gives you less time to prepare. So big move from the coach here. Um, somebody say him give top of the clothesline. So that was the game that they're talking about um, right there. Um, Stefan says, well, that will be difficult either way. Who will be the right back to help slow down? Uh, Vinny Jr. <laughs> okay, definitely not Javin Brown. In my opinion, playing against Brazil is not the best thing at the moment. We need to play teams we can beat to build confidence going into the World Cup, says Mr. United. Mr. United look like he might get weak in the war, man. Come on, Mr. United. A Jamaica, we say. Tyrone say, use the top four wingers. Jay, anywhere that says, yes, it's an official game. Um, everybody want reggae boys, JT. It's obvious you're doing a, a comparing some of the bloggers. We can't even get 15 p. Oh, god, Mr. United, bless up everybody. No, Teddy Lee, I don't know which one of the comments you want. All right, Teddy Lee, I'm gonna let you jump on one of those comments and shove on. Right. You just you just segue into after what um Teddy Lee point is. Which one of those comments you all want to stick up? All right, so are, are the person saying that we basically we should appear Brazil right now, you know, them are tough team. But we believe face the tough teams and the coach have a balance. Remember, we play Trindal and some other teams, so the coach I go play the tough teams and also him have some other team. Remember Andurus, we are Andurus basically on the same level, if we are get that much. So it's a balance. So uh, we play tough teams and we play teams on our level. So the coach is a balance that, you know, we're not going to play Brazil then, um, uh, Argentina next. No. So <laughs> may, may I agree with the coach, play Brazil and um, play another team after. So, so I'm you have no fear. Yeah, you know, no, no, no fear. If we get six or something right now, no problem. But I don't have a problem if we get six um, next year, uh, you know. You know, so. <laughs> yeah, well, based on all this coach player. I don't think we don't get six, but as I said, the right back and some we'll talk about them there later still. The defense, the positions them, but um I think I have confidence on the coach still. 
All right. Siobhan, what's your take on this game? As you know, Military Guna has also breaking um broke the news ryan on elite sports has also broke the news guys and so i went to check on the euro sports and the game is there i don't know why the euro euro sport the website would just put that up out of nowhere i i don't see the benefit of that like for them to just put up a schedule for a game that just randomly like a website just randomly just pick jamaica versus brazil that would be very random so there has to be some kind of negotiation taking place or something leaked to someone. Go ahead, Shavan. Yeah, um, afternoon, everyone in the chat. Afternoon. Shavan, you always oh, sound like you just wake up, brother. Remember, I'm at work, bro. Remember okay. Work. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I saw the news this morning. Um, Honestly, I'm kind of optimistic because looking, even looking at Brazil, they haven't been the Brazil that we Jamaicans have grown to love. Um, they're not Brazil. They're not the Brazil that we all know of. Um, Who are I they? Who are they, Chavon? It's a European version of Brazil. This is not the original Brazilians that we know of. So the game style, which I think has been one of the main reasons why they haven't been successful as of late, it's because their play style has changed. They've moved away from Brazilian Jogo Bonito Samba football mm -hmm. to the more European style. So they've lost their identity in that aspect, which I think it's their biggest issue. Um, so if we were to play them, play them, and if there was any chance of us potentially getting a positive result against Brazil, I think this would be a better time once we have the right player selected. Um, when I saw the when I saw the when I saw the news earlier, I was I was really optimistic. I was like, yeah, Brazil. It's a good game. Um I saw I know persons stated that they wish it was playing in Jamaica, but I don't think Brazil would want that. I don't think Jamaica could. I don't think the Federation could afford that. To be honest, because But that, that wouldn't that be a game, um, Shavon and Teddy Lee, where the Jamaican Federation need to break the bank to make it happen in Jamaica. Because I think yeah, that but, would revive football in Jamaica. Yeah, this would remind the fans what football is all about. But JT, remember this as well. Jamaica has had, over the last two years, we've had so many top talent coming from the UK, coming to play for the national team, and they haven't marketed it well. We have a Ilian Bailey, and they haven't marketed it marketed that well to benefit them. So what do you think that they would make the they would change no so we have to just be realistic when it comes to marketing wait let me ask you a people. question Shava. let me ask you Shava, let me let you go back to that point um teddy lee you think lee and bailey have a marketable personality in jamaica just like the player where you used you would want to use as a flagship that like his personality mm -hmm. look like let, let me just Leon get Bailey. Teddy Lee. Teddy Lee, what's your take on that? I'm going to jump back to Siobhan. All right. So, I um, mean, I look for Leon Bailey. And Leon Bailey, I'm going him. Everybody know I'm going him, but he's not so marketable. Choke the tone. <laughs> um, so, I look, I look for a player when I say marketable. And Ethan Pinnock, Pinnock would not be marketable. You know, humble person. He look like him can meet and greet. and You know? But, um... Yeah, Leon Bailey not so marketable. And me, I know, oh, people not take out of context of me, so, you know? And <laughs> you know, people will clip a thing and say what I would say. As I said, the youth is a good youth, but he needs to think, he can learn still, you know? Mm. Kind of be marketable somewhere. For example, Ryan Sterling, even him in come Jamaica, I don't know, but him have it, him have some marketable thing about him. Yes, yes, yeah. That's why I'm gonna ask the question and continue, Shavon. I just wanted to um um once you said about market it because I think it takes a specific kind of person to market a, a product. And, right, and, so and, 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 and 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 Leon Bailey has kind of kept out of the Jamaican media, so I don't really know how that to enhance the brand. Continue. Yeah, right, so I so so forgot him. I think Boza boys are marketable to me. People um, you know, Boza can get people based but Boys are more marketable. So in a way, but boys are more marketable. And, and, and let me just dive in. Hold on again, Siobhan. And this is where I think the JFF and, and Adidas dropped the ball. How the hell 
none of other the players who are playing right now wasn't a part of the Adidas campaign. If we even gonna market something, how is none of the players um like not a part of the thing? This is very strange, bro. Because if you're gonna market a player, you don't even have them in the jersey. This this is this is um this is not I, I don't get it. Continue, Shavon. All right, so um this is what I am going to say now. All right, Ted Lee, you remember the, the Gold Cup game that was played in Jamaica? Well, it's a Gold Cup game that was played in Jamaica. That was yeah, 2017 or 2019. 2019, 2019. I'll play Honduras at the stadium. Yeah, man, I think I treat to, yeah, Leon B. Yeah, remember that much, yeah. So that was Leon Bailey's debut game for Jamaica. Yeah. In the National Stadium, right? Yeah, man. JT, you remember the crowd? I don't know. Tell you, I don't know if you were at the game, but if you were, I'm pretty no. sure that was the that was the beat that was in the longest while. That was the most crowd you've seen at the national stadium. The biggest crowd we see in the national stadium still, you know, is Jamaica against Trinidad, you know, bro. It was Dwight really? York. No, I'm talking about a few no, years about ago. Recently, oh, recently. Okay. recently. Oh, recently. Okay. Oh, recently. recently. Okay. That game. Believe me, even I was surprised. I saw when Leon Bailey walked down to the field for warm-ups and he went to the bleachers and he clapped. Mm. Brother, the whole of bleachers really up. Because Leon Bailey is the fi- Leon Bailey is the most marketable player in Jamaica from a Jamaican standpoint. Most Jamaicans don't know Ethan Pinnock. Yeah, most yeah, Jamaicans I... don't know Mikel Antonio. We just have to be realistic. They might be better players. I, I don't know about more. Mikel Antonio, bro. I, I would agree with you on because as what Teddy Lee was saying. No, what I think... said, Boza is more marketable than B- Bailey. So but, but, based, Boza, but, but, but think about this, Teddy. Um, based yeah. on Boza farm and the club that he is at is not a marquee club. I think Lee and Bailey would have more of a pulling power in a that sense. Would you say that you guys wouldn't say that? You know, uh, based on farm, a, a lot of fans disappoint, still disappointed. Bill, the first match, that first match, remember my first match, people I expect big things. It was a gold cup match in a Jamaica for the first time, so. The crowd are gonna be big people. I want to see Bailey for the first time a long time. I call for him yeah, yeah, to play yeah. on it, you know. So, the, but now I right. tell you, me go match and see people. I say take a Bailey and a bag of things. So, <laughs> Yo, you know, steadily. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you have a, a personal gripe with Leon. Yeah, they know. Yeah, they. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. I'm saying. I don't. But remember, we start. We start. Pretty shy in 2017. I call for Bailey for play, you know. Yeah, Ask Craig Butler them. What I'm just saying steadily. Yeah. For you to say Bowser is more marketable than Leon Bailey. Bro, I don't even think Bowser would have believed in that, brother. I don't ah, hear what? Ah, hear what? Maybe I need to go for a video with Bowser <laughs> when Maro say the high school and him said, look at young Bowser and look at Bowser now. It's like, does that video alone that can market Bowser in terms of say the when you go with, you the, want with, to... with the younger youths, them, right? Yeah, that, that the video there. People know Boza from the EJPL and a bag of things. So, may I tell you, Boza, maybe you're not so lie, but Boza is marketable. I'm not saying that he's not marketable, you know, but in the Jamaican space where you have dancehall artists singing songs about him. That's what, that's a, that's what I'm talking about, you know. Read, read this that's comment it. here, Siobhan. This person said, Leon is too reserved to be marketable for a brand like Jamaica, which I agree with. That's why I talked so about it. So He's a bit too reserved. So why flow sponsor him? Flow sign him? But I didn't know that. Siobhan, Siobhan, you missed a point. What do I say marketable are? Leon Bill is not the, in too reserved like what the person hold say. I'm not too... You hold know, you need here. vibes. Yeah. You know that. All right, look at Man City side, right? You have a player like De Bruyne. De Bruyne is extremely reserved. But Nike use him as marketing. It's not pretending a player can be as reserved as possible. No, because it's not the same, Siobhan. De Bruyne in the world of football is the midfielder. 
That's a yes, different. But Leon Bailey for Jamaica is the footballer. No, 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 no. But, but are we talking about marketing on a local level here or on a global scale? That's what we need both. to pinpoint first. It's both. That's no. what I'm trying to say. On a Jamaican, on a Jamaican level. All right. If Jamaica is going to play a match at the national stadium right now, who is going to be in the stadium? Jamaicans mainly. Jamaicans who live in Jamaica or Jamaicans who live overseas? Who will be mostly in the stadium? I think that's where we went wrong. We didn't define the, 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 the context of the discussion. And I think that's where a lot of people might even start. Because if somebody said, Teddy Lee, you can't take it back. You already gone viral. <laughs> I think based on the context that we started the discussion, it hasn't been like, let's just pinpoint. Where, where are we taking this from? Uh, let's say on the local level, we would say, Leon Bailey, based on his stardom and the club that he's at on the international level, I would say Mikel Antonio. Yeah, because... on the international level, Mikel Antonio will be more marketable. But I'm saying yes. from a Jamaican standpoint, if you want Jamaicans to come in at the stadium, if you mm -hmm. want Jamaicans to buy the jersey, you get a Leon Bailey. Because the youth them even whisper right now, me that think more more marketable in a Jamaica more than Bowser. That one that would tell the lady I say. Oh crap! That that's a big one, there, you know, Shavon. I think Shavon might be right on that, you know, um, um, because Whisper, no, you see, Whisper is the new era. Whisper is the because I think that the JFF is missing a trick with finding a way to get the excitement around the international program that schoolboy football has, and I think the key to that is a player like Adujan Whisper. You yeah. know, because the school kids already have a rapport with him. Is how are they exactly. going to basically tie that into the 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 the, the internet the, into the, the the senior man sport? Because I think when you look at the fans at the stadium, Teddy Lee has been to the game. Shavon, you has been to the game. The the the, 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 the audience for the Jamaica football game tends to be men around the age, um, say twenty five and sixty, right? Yeah, you can say that with some, yeah, majority, majority. Majority. And you want to get that down to around seven, because you see here, when I go to a FC Copenhagen game or a Malma game, you see now the whole of them hooligan section there, his kids were all 12 years old to, to 20. Yeah, because they built a rapport already with the fan base or so the fan yes. base. But as I always tell persons, you know, it's good that we we'll have the fans and that we we'll have but you need to build new fans. You need to have new fans because 10 years down the line, persons who are 50 are going to be 60 and they may not have the drive to want to go to the stadium. Stadium. Whereas yeah, yeah. you have 10 year olds now, in the next 10 years, they are going to be 20. But if you don't grab those persons' attention from now, when they reach 20, they don't have the interest for the for stadium, for go watch the team. All right, Siobhan, you, you hit a point. Teddy Lee, Moa asks you, what age group you think is the most die-hearted set of fans where even if the team is losing, they will show up to the game still? Because is, is the youngsters patient enough to go support a losing team, though they might know that a whisper is out there who can pull a trick? Yeah, I think the, the, the 35 to... Maybe 50, you know. The youngsters, them not so patient. That, or if you're not a win, some of them not turn up. You know, that's the reality where I kind of realize. But I go back to the marketing thing. Me know, you know, me know people say me, I said, the bad man, a man. No. But <laughs> personality wise, um, Leon do have the personality. But in terms of a big name, name recognition, me get Bailey. But personality wise, a boss, I'm going to get that. As a person. Personality. Okay. Yeah, so, personality. But, but how does personality fit into this? You think ah, so, personality, ah, so, yeah. Yeah, man. Building a bond with the fans. Like people, person. And, um, you have to have that in your head. Me don't start now really. Yeah. The, the people, person stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. Siobhan, continue. Um, as I was say, um, it, it's each person's opinion still. Um, just say, I can't really say much. I know Teddy Lee um, believes in that regard. I have to respect each person's opinion. Um, but, I, but yeah, we kind of stray away from the point, the whole Brazil, 
brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's just yeah, reggae boys football. We're gonna we because at the end of the day, the game hasn't been confirmed as yet. Yeah, too. it hasn't been so, confirmed or anything, it, it's just rumors. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, it's, it's 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 been it's it's posted on our website. It's published. So, well, let me just let the fans know. You can check out Eurosports.com for the article and the schedule of the match. Jamaica is slated to play Brazil. So this is not some random rumors where you hear on Sports Prophecy TV where somebody just jump up. This was that's something that you can go and verify. So if this game doesn't happen, uno know who to beat. Don't come back here so with it. Say JT. Fake news, a Donald Trump thing at the point. Please and thanks, people. Continue, Siobhan. Yeah, so um, pertaining to that, um, it would be good if the game was played in Jamaica, to be honest. Mm. Um, I know it would draw a large crowd. Believe me, it would, because it's Brazil. And a lot of Brazilian fans out here. But I just think, I just don't think the, the JFF would be able to, because I hear that it's oh, a million US dollars just to play Brazil. You have accommodation. And you can't put Brazil up at the JFF, um, the Captain yeah. Burial Center. You can't carry Brazil up there, so because they're not gonna accept that. You know what we do for rejuvenate football in the stadium? We bring Brazil and ask the government for release vibes cartel for the halftime show. <laughs> the stadium book. I think what I think what would be a better example <laughs> if the government was to help. With funding that particular game mm -hmm. i mean the cartel thing would be a good idea but you yeah, know but the government yeah. now really do no that would have a lot of pushback bro um um yeah. corporate jamaica would have say you you're using a prisoner to promote the brand and yeah that, that was yeah. just a little um a joke thing guys but um i would maybe having a a, a like a burner boy for the halftime show you know what i mean not like necessarily a, you don't need a burner boy for that JT, it's a Brazil, you know. Brazil can sell themselves, you know. That's the reason why they say, you know, if you want to play a Brazil, you have to no, spend money, no, no, Shavon. What you don't understand is adding, you see, it's like having a fire. I'm just can want gas, I'm can want gas truck tanker and turn on the hose panic because what, what Burner Boy would have done now is it he would have put the game and Jamaica in the algorithm on the internet. Of when you look at Burner Boy, you look at the performance at the stadium, you start seeing Im images linked to that event popping up Jamaica football, Brazil. That's how marketing work, you know, it would have created a thread on the internet to build a spark. However, uh, Burner Boy right. was just in Jamaica, so that's out of it right now at this point. All right. So, what Mia says is this I get that, but forget a Burner Boy, would that be expensive or them? Brother, you can go to a regular, you go to Valiant, you go to Skin and just tell them, say, yo, we're going to promote the game on an IG page or whatever. It's all of the youths, them. It's just like, oh, youth, them can say, yo, them dunce and them proud now. If you have Valiant, them from them, man, they literally come up and I say them. No, I, I really don't want to actually add dunceness to the football still in a shower. No, we're not bringing that. What we yeah, are saying yeah. is that if you have those, because those persons are. Do, all right, it's like oh, in Europe you have influencers. Mm -hmm. Those are the actual influence of, of influencers of Jamaican youths. Believe me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are the influencers yeah. of Jamaican youths. Believe me. I don't all know right? if they want to bring the dumbness. So you must say you don't need far. to spend a bag of money to get a burner boy. You don't need it. You don't need to spend all the money there because have other influencers you get the youth them you get them monday you get the dancers them on jamaica for just come out and say yo yo bring bring a burn um bring a valiant bring a skin bring some other top artists but you see this way you see Sh um, Shavan, this is where me i think differently now i'm thinking about something that's gonna put jamaica on the international stage we put the event on the international stage. Those people are going to convert up the, the local um, spirit that we need. But that's already going to be there from Brazil coming by itself. I'm thinking how to maximize the potential of this encounter by adding another star power. Let's just even say like just a random example. Like let's say you have a Drake at a halftime show. This is no longer just a... People are there at the stadium for, they say that get people back at the stadium from seven in the morning. 
You see me? I say that's what I'm just saying. I'm just looking at it from that end. We know we don't want the JFF to do that because it's gonna be they would have to collaborate with somebody else to make that happen. But let's just move away a little bit from that, guys. So as you see by the title, it's slated Jamaica versus Brazil. Um, we were a little bit on the um on the, on the wingers, and Teddy talked about the four wingers that he would take. Um, I still think that we have midfield issues, Siobhan and Teddy Lee. Um, I don't think Reese James will. Re, I'm talking about Reese James. Reese Nelson will be ready for this game, so we're still gonna be stuck with Ravel Morris and DJ in the middle. Guys, what is the solution going forward? Because I don't think that this two attacking midfielder playing. A box to box rule is the way forward. Let's start with you, Teddy, and then Shavan jump in. What's the solution here with this, Teddy? All right, so the solution, obviously, John Russell, <laughs> and maybe a Ravel or DJ. I think I want to do a player there, the coach. I got. But first, maybe we need to pick a wing as them, or we discuss where we believe the coach I got to deal with. But I think John Russell, I got, to me, is secure in, in, in spot as I maybe a CDM for now. Okay, so 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 we would, you would you would potentially start a John Russell in the, Jonathan Russell, but I think we need more depth at that position because only we, other option we have is Kevin Lambert. Yeah, that's uh, uh, by the way, I'm uh, um, the coach arriving at the island yet. I want I'm soon come. I, I have no details on that. I have last thing we heard he was he went to Iceland and then he went to the UK. So. I don't know where he is right now. As Mr. United says, we have a midfield crisis, bro. Because Ravel is not playing football either. And DJ is rubbing the bench. So, so at the end of the day, we don't actually have a starting midfielder at their club going into an international competition. That's actually quite... That's not a good thing, bro. No, man, Bobby, Bobby, yeah. In the, uh, the wing, Bobby would have the escalate secure and right midfield position, you know? I don't know if Leon is... Wait, no, that me say this. No, that me say this, people, people. And remember to hit the like button, guys. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you notice I don't prompt people a lot to subscribe or to like. I want people to subscribe if you feel like the content is up your alley or it is giving you value for your what subscription no i want to say that guys when you look at the jamaica team a lot of our players are not starting at their clubs because right now leon billing is injured uh let, let me let me mute Shavon for a bit um leon bailey is injured michael antonio is off and on on the bench. Boza is a bench player at his club. Jamal Lowe is a bench player. Ravel Morris isn't playing football. DJ is coming off the bench. Damian Lowe is coming off the bench. Ethan Pinnock is a starter. Amari Bell is a starter. Lambesika is a starter, is, is, a, is, a, is a bench player. So when you look at Jamaica, 90% of our players are bench players. Yeah, we have to even include them, I agree. I just said that the game start, start now, and our number nine never make him play. But them, I agree. Um, kind of depend a bit. But on the two kind of starter, we have Bobby Reed and Ethan Pinnock. And sometimes Bobby Reed kind of go up on the bench for a while. You know? So, and by the way, so we are go back to recently. So, Mr. So we are at least, um, with the club, the Aston Villa, that look like they want him too. So, I wonder why and them have our wingers already. No, I think Aston Villa would be perfect for Reese Nelson, guys. Aston Villa matches what um Reese Nelson matches what Aston Villa is wants to do. And trust me, I think next season is gonna be a big season for Aston Villa. The style of football that Aston Villa has played under Emery is my type of football. Expansive. Look when Aston Villa has the ball now, they don't look flustered. Aston yeah. Villa looks like we want you to come and get it from us and we're going to play you, how, however you, how good you are. The Brighton game today, oh my God, man. I wish that Jamaica, like we had a coach who knew how to set up a team to press like Brighton. 
Yo, Brighton, as they said, is one of the best pressing team in the Premiership, even better than Manchester City. Brighton is one of the top pressing teams in the EPL at the moment. The way they press, bro, and I looked at something that they did against Manchester United today. They, the way they press, they don't press with the two players being far apart where it gives the player with the ball an outlet to play the pass between them. They press with the players running parallel at a slant. So what it does is it does give you a straight pass through the players. You, you can understand what I said, Teddy Lee? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I understand, man. Yeah, and, and, I, and I thought that was, I was like, whoa, that, that Brighton, the way Brighton pressed, I haven't seen that in football before. I'm going to be very honest to you. I understand the triangle press. I understand how um, um, teams press other teams in certain areas of the park. But Brighton has a special way of pressing. I don't know if they basically created their own way of how they press people. But you talk about Reese Nelson going to uh, Aston Villa. I think this would no, be man, no, the no, man. No, I said that one of the club. I think even Brian, you know, so Brian Aston Villa and another club, basically mm -hmm. want him. So I think maybe Aston Villa with maybe go, it depends on who will get the better, bigger price. I think he should go to Aston Villa because Brighton, he's going to have problems starting over the Japanese on the left hand side. I, I, I think uh, Momoto or whatever his name is, he's, he's very good. Um, Today he had another excellent game against Manchester United so he would be coming off the bench again if he goes to Aston Villa he's actually competing with another Jamaican Leon B you think yeah, Leon, Leon B Bailey, yeah, Leon Bailey. <laughs> you think Leon Bailey will be at Aston Villa next season let no, me know no, in the I, comment yeah, section because if they go for recently so obviously as like they might say them now impressed with Leon Bailey maybe because of too much injury or something but if they go for recently so that is basically a sign. Yes, yes. Rich Nelson plays on the right-hand side and he's left-footed. Sorry about that, guys. He plays on the right-hand side and he's a left-footed player. So he's cutting in on his left off the right. Let me just read a few more comments. Jay Suguna said, um, Johnson played six league games since the Nation League. Gary Powell said, put Bobby Reed in at the middle, brother. Um, so not coming off the bench currently. Somebody say Antonio started in the last six games. Um, Antonio, he's okay, he came back from injury. It's been six games since Antonio been fit already. Yo, the league are move fast, brother. I never know that. Last seven games, DJ has started. Yeah, I remember the last time I watched DJ, he was on the bench. So I haven't kept it. When, when I see the Jamaican players on the bench, I don't really have the energy to watch the game. Because I'm not a fan of those teams. I just watch the games to watch the Jamaican players and support them. That's basically, to be honest. So as soon as I see a Jamaican is not starting, me just nobody watch the team. When Leon Bailey now start, I still watch Aston Villa because I like what they're doing. Even when you look at a player like Coutinho and look how Aston Villa phased out at Coutinho, this is a sign that you see in football, brother, you can be good in football. But if you don't match into a system, you potentially won't be a part of the coach's plan. And that's what's happening to Katina right now. Because Katina was more a Steven Gerrard player. He brought in Katina. But Emery is not trying to attack straight down the middle with a Katina. He wants to open up and create more width in the way he attack. Um, this person said, you are clone, but better than City. Hazard said, better than City. Stop being sarcastic. I said, Teddy Lee, you, you, you think um, Bright, you think City Press is a better pressing team than Brighton? I don't know. That's just my weird opinion. Somebody say I'm a clown for that, for saying that. <laughs> I said, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that still, you know? <laughs> <laughs> What's your opinion on that? Siobhan, uh, are you Chevan, still there? Uh, Siobhan, you know? <laughs> Yeah, um, all right, so I don't believe in disrespecting people for their own opinion. I'm a City fan, so obviously I am going to be biased, but even Pep Guardiola himself came out and said that Brighton has the best press in the world okay. right now, so, and he's the coach of Man City, so as I said, when persons have their opinions, sometimes it doesn't make sense to really try to argue with them, 
and especially if that person is trying to be disrespectful, so sometimes it's best to just ignore it. But Pep himself, uh, and, 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 and Shavon, you see why JTL always I go stick to him guns. Me never know say Pep Guardiola said that. Me, me just is based on my evaluation of what I've seen, Hazard. I when me sit today, no. Brighton, Pep him said said that Brighton has the best press in the world right now. Pep him said Pep said Pep said it himself. Yeah, me, so me never even didn't know that. Boy, so. so. Me, me, me never know that, Chavon. Me just see bright in a press. I may say, oh, what is, oh, what kind of press this, brother? Me never, me, like, I don't tell Hazard. You see, when we watch football, you know, them say, you know, in life, you know, me and you cannot look through the same window. But when me look outside, you look on cars or me look on some, a green field or somebody else look on a flags or something. We, but we are looking through the same window. It's just our perspective of, the world, our perception is a bit different. Based on how Messi Brighton, at one point, Barcelona had a really good press as well. Um, but me, me, since the Barcelona press, they bro, a, a Brighton, no more Messi alone, where it's so effective the way how Messi them press, bro. You see me, I say, them just look, them look, um, them, um, them just look different to me, especially against the bigger clubs. That's what me used to, um, um, that's so we used to judge them. It's not like Brighton is pressing against Nottingham Forest, brother. It's Manchester United. I may say the Manchester United defenders look confused. You know, see how the man take the ball and kick in on the hair face today, knock him out. One kick in him face. Is that was off the press? That was off the press. The man just press and clip it off, off, off. Um, what the brother your name now? Your name? Um, what the, the right back name? Um. One Bissaka, a man just take it off of Bissaka and slam it in the air face, brother. Off of the press today, I mean, I say, Whoa, that was that was quick. Um, yes, but Jamaica, uh, should we be concerned that 90% of our players, because this is a revelation to me, I just actually stumbled into this stats right now. 90% of our players are bench players at their clubs. Feel free to jump in, Shavon or Teddy Lee. Um, I never heard what you just repeat that. I said 90% of our players for Jamaica are bench players at their clubs or either not playing football. Uh, not surprised, to be honest. But, um, it's a bit concerning based on the fact that we want to be seen as a, um, as a better quality team itself, but... It has it is potential because the players it's not as if they're bench players and they're not getting games. They're getting games, it's just that they're just not starting. Mm -hmm. So it's good on that um, respect. Um yeah, man, I really don't know what to say in that regard, JD, to be honest. Um So should we lower our know. expectation then, Shavan? Should we start lowering our expectations knowing that um Jamaica we ninety percent of our players are bench players, Mr. United and Romario and Hazard and Sean Base and Ames. Ninety uh, percent of our players are bench players at their clubs. Should we lower our expectation? Maybe we're still stuck on the idea of um big of yourself, Mr. Special Edition. Should are we stuck on the idea that Jamaica has these marquee names at marquee clubs, but ninety percent of our players are bench players at their clubs? Should we look into that stats? Should we feed into that? Are you there, Teddy Lee? No, yeah, yeah. So here yeah, well, we have to use our have a some seat. And um, I don't believe we have to kind of to um what do you want me to look for the word now? Like pay to to um any attention to certain like for example, um the Babi um what name? Jamal and others. Sometimes I just a competition, but guess what? When them come, them are play them best. You know, Damian Lowe, sometimes you're not even know so if him basically they are playing. Ravel Morris coming out of the Jamaican colors, he's like, you never know him now playing a football, you know? So we, know, we don't know how long that going to work, but um, sometimes I go have some teams where some of them players are bench players. The US, yes, we need Paul Sick and others are star, but maybe a couple of them players are bench, that's all. And Canada too. Let, let me just recap, guys. For everybody who's just joining the show and you're questioning 
whether or not the friendly is legit, you can go over to Eurosports.com and you can look at the schedule for the upcoming friendlies in the FIFA window. That's where the game has been scheduled that Jamaica would be playing against Brazil in Brazil. So you can go there, guys, and look at Eurosports.com and you can check out um, the game because Eurosport would be really going over the top to just come up with a random um, game and publish it. Or maybe they are used in analytics and seeing that the Jamaican fan base is one of the most active fan bases in football on the internet and they want to drive traffic to their website. That's the only thing I could think of. But then that would destroy their credibility. So go over to Eurosport.com and you will see the schedule for the game. That's where we're getting this information where Jamaica is slated to play against Brazil in June in the FIFA window. I think it's June 13. And the FIFA window, I think, starts on June 12. So go over there and check it out for yourself, guys. So you know that this wasn't something that was concocted here and we came up with that. Um, continue on the point, Teddy Lee. Yeah, man. So even a uh, comment section, I look, man. Even a person said Pulisic uh, a bench player for Chelsea. I don't know. Okay. Oh, oh, a lot. I I ask that. Sure, I go do I mean to watch not Chelsea thing. So yeah, uh, Pulisic is a, a bench player right right now. Or what? Yeah, he is. He is. A yeah, Pulisic hardly get game for Chelsea right now. And uh, then, and then with that, in my US, not uh, even with that, we basically the marketing first of a uh, US right now, okay, yeah, to some extent, he would be their best player, yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's, he's not their he's, best he's player, their man. most marketed player, yeah, he's the he's, 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 English, the American, what Rooney. yeah, he's the he's, he's bench player, so maybe this is how we maybe can look at it. Maybe if a player is bent, do you think if a player is benching at a Man City or Manchester United and Chelsea comparing to a player who's benching at, let's say, a MLS? Wickham, yeah, MLS or Wickham Wonders. Is that different, right? Yeah, man, different. Yeah, because yeah, if you're one bench, if you're on the bench at the EPL, me, me not pay that no attention because you're still the quality. If you go a championship, you're not start or something, you know? So we have to look for championship player with the on the bench and League One players and MLS players with the on the bench. Damian Lowe, like what people they say they had to break that your partnership there still. But um I just say but maybe he'll soon break it one day. Maybe people don't say he shall remain with him last club because him they are start every minute. You know, mm. but him decide to move on to one of the better teams them. Um Gary Powell said JT, not because they come off the bench at at their your club we have to lower our standard it is the mentality of the players and how they stay ready when called upon i think that's a brilliant comment by gary powell i think you probably just ended that segment of the show gary powell you just came in with and dropped the mic i think that's exactly what it is um somebody else Rom romario says but if he did at the club or player at he will surely start in what do you think um, Romario, clarify that one for me a bit. Um, I'm not sure where what, um, JT, what's, what's um, that jump off, you know, come here, work, you know, here. All right, yeah, man, travel safe. Yeah, all right, bless up, bless up. All right, bless up. Um, let's just take a final one on that topic in the segment. Um, this person say, um, this person say, hence. We have to look at the quality of the players and where they are being benched. Just what we just spoke about there, Teddy Lee. No, at the defense, in the defensive end of the park for Jamaica, if we go up and play against a Brazil, this is where we will know how terrible we are defensively or how good we are defensively. What do you think? Yeah, uh, yeah, that would be good. All right, so before I go reach here, I me, need me my forward and the wingers that I'm going bring. So the forward line, Mikel Antonio. Shemar Nichols, so Jamal and Leon Daly. Them four, they are my forward. Mm -hmm. Wing as them, would have been Demarai Gray, Bobby Reed, and yes, Tariq Jimenez, I put him as a right midfielder. And Kaim Paris, you know? That are my midfield still, the wing as them. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you say about that. I would have put Leon Daly in the midfield and bring another forward. And what. No, tell you, we're not going to do none of them experiment right now. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, man, Tyreek Hill is, I think, him, as him kind of offer more defensive if I'm playing at mid, you know, the midfield. But I don't trust him at right back or not like that. Bring him as no backup, as no right back. Tyreek who? Tyreek him in his man. <laughs> No, wait, you, wait, wait, what you just say a while ago? Calling Zimenez for the, the team? Yeah, man, when I'm bringing him like World Cup as a right midfielder, I know you would have start a Bobby Reed. Brother, but, Zimenez yeah. is not, listen, listen, don't yeah. watch the, don't watch the Belgian hype, um, don't watch the Belgian hype, Teddy Lee. Let me tell you, you see, Belgium, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's, Belgium is, I believe, bro, and this is, this is one of the prophecies of, the sports prophecy channel. I believe that you see based on your agent and the pushing power that your agent have, it determines the amount of playing time you get in Belgium and how fast you get sold. I believe that. I believe that your agent relationship with the club and, and the deal that's been struck to get you moving fast, because I think that's what happened to Tyreek McGee. Them carry him go there and the money never right, bro. Them left him for dead. There was no, it's like an artist in bus, <laughs> but nobody now pushing career. Yeah. Like, yeah, them have to push your career at Belgium, brother. You don't just go to, you see, if they don't push your career at Belgium, you have to dominate. You see, like how Boza went there and he's just a big structure and he's just obvious on your TV screen, said, This guy's a heavyweight. That's yeah. what happens. But them little players, they like Zimenez, I give, it's it's a high chance he just probably get lost in the Belgian league, bro. I'm I'm telling you, it's it's a lot of talent. There is ten Zimines going to Belgium in the next couple of months, brother. Twenty, thirty of them. Next year, you you you're struggling even all the forget time on the second team. Belgium is like a football factory. They just turn over players, brother. They 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 if if you're not if they don't see it. Like it's just like as me say, like an artist. If you're a manager artist steadily, and your fee say you can't make the money off of him, you're on to the next. And yeah. So they move, they move a Belgium. And I still think that based on what I've saw from Tyreek Ximenez at the under 20 level, I'm not convinced. As Don't a right back, no, remember right back you see him play still, you know. Mm. <laughs> but midfield with someone that I'm bring him for play you now, at least right midfield, you know. But he's playing striker at his club in Belgium. Yeah, come on, so, come on, yeah, man. That's how we now, yeah. As I say, I think you would have, yeah, as I say, I think you know, be, uh, I believe you know, more defensive than uh, Malay and Bailey as a winger. What do you say about that? To be I'm honest, here to have cool is this. <laughs> 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 but Bailey not to defend as a winger, that's the thing now. What may I say, the coach, the current coach, he want defensive minded players as in wingers, you know. So, Bobby Reed, he always like Bobby Reed, always. Always. BLA, man, as a second striker as a camp. But him now got to yeah, him play BLA right now as a winger because him not to have none yet. But as soon as he gets somebody, he might put BLA at least as a second striker. So the coach yeah. might not go in a right now and that may I do. Teddy Lee, yeah. Jimenez is not in any football discussion when it comes on to Jamaican football for me anytime soon, brother. Well, <laughs> Because people are yes, maybe I say him have a good agent, but um, him kind of maybe I will create the buzz, but we might do something. Can right we could say, could I go Belgium on a bench like uh, Mr. Tyreek Maggie, you know? But look, look, look at it yeah. this way, Teddy Lee. You have Ronaldo Cephas and you have Kahim Paris. Do, those you know, two players, Paris never read the man. Do, those two players, um. Those two players, brother, those two players are struggling. Those two players are struggling to basically make the team. So how are we going to bring in a Ximenez over a Kahim Paris and a Ronaldo Cephas? As we said, him defense, look at defensive work. And that's that Mr. Samuel I'm bringing me in first. And him young. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so move it. on to the defense then, because that are gonna be the that who, who was the strikers you're taking to play against Brazil? Because in I think Brazil, we would have to um um let, let me read this comment from Real Um Bala. Um I think he says JT um 
summation is wrong. The youth move up two levels at the club. He nah, that, that's what I've said to JD. You know, <laughs> two levels. You're making no sense. Well, I accept your um rebuttal there. Um real but um real baller. Uh, may a real baller disagree with that that in Belgium you don't want to peak too early. That's just that's just what I think. Because you, you then if you peak too early, the only way to go is down. Because all right, so, all right, so JD, remember when you go, I think our under 21, when they play first, under nine, when they play. I think they say under 21. And then you go to under 23, I know. So he man like him leap. You know? Yeah. But we don't agree with the last part where him say say you're not making say, you know, but I just feel prerogative that, you know. But, but even Omari Hutchinson, but listen what I said about Omari Hutchinson. Omari Hutchinson has leaped as well at Arsenal, where he jumped to the senior team on the bench. He has done that at Chelsea. However, I don't see Omari Hutchinson coming into Jamaica team and starting. No, no, I could have start. By the way, the Omar Hutchinson them said they train the part. I'm going with that. No, no, no. Wait, wait, okay, so Omar say, Hutchinson, what? I wonder if a train pass or something. I am my whole out because I think I hear some things. Huh? Yeah, we 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 mash up that this week again, and we. Yeah. Uh, That's why we don't call calls. in here. We don't squad again because we can't call players. What we know, we be a scale if I'm, you know. Yeah, we are if I'm um, if I'm, um, but uh, so we're gonna give him time because, and the reason why I'm giving him time and I'm not stressing him, he's not a he's not an immediate starter. You know, I think he do he do he has the ability though. If nothing is happening for you, happening for you in the middle of the park, you bring him on. And he potentially can create a spark for you if a Ravel Morrison, a DJ, is just lethargic and just sleeping in the middle of the park. You can yeah. maybe bring on a live wire like like a Omar Hutchinson, too, who's a brave. Because players like Omar Hutchinson, they tend to be very brave and daring and want to do things. And they might make something happen. Um, as far as, as you say, we, Zimine is out of the discussion as far as... Let me tell you, two players who's not supposed to be around the team right now, Javin Brown and Tyreek Ximenez. Those two players need to work on their game outside of the program, brother. They're just not ready. And Teddy Lee, I take some of the blame for Javin Brown. And you have yeah, to take most, some of the yeah. blame as well, too. Yeah, you, remember so. what, you remember, right? You remember, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in, in the well, there's some couple, couple games still about, um, I just saw a girl with Javin Brown, you know? And I think even him must like him start bench, you know. Bro, the bench shall be his home. I promise you, if he doesn't improve, them guys they're gonna become bench captain. May I tell you, if, especially Javin, bro, you cannot be playing football at a high level like that, and you keep doing the same thing wrong. Like the, yeah. funny, the, the funny, like look when Dexter Lambesica came on against Mexico, brother. The man don't allow. A lot of space between him and the winger for the winger able to make that move on the outside or the inside. Him just latch on. The first yeah. time I see the youth in the Trinidad game, I say, yes, that's what good um, uh, wing backs do. They latch on to you, brother. Them latch on to you. Even look at the Brighton game today. <clears throat> look at the Brighton game. The man Nangi Rashford, the, 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 the right back for Brighton. Him Nangi Rashford, no time on the ball. Fernandez, no time yeah. on the ball. Because when you give good players time on the ball, bro, the field too big. You are gonna get caught out of position. So sure. Javin Brown and Javin Brown runs too much in a straight line, brother. <laughs> him, yeah. You know, you look at the Teddy League, him always a run, run to get back to position. So what that tells you that he's out of position. If you're running yeah. to get back in position, you're out of position. <laughs> Yeah, true. Yeah. I since we're talking about right back, so who oh, um Mr. Um, what's your name? Lambesique and who? I'm bringing the Lambesique and I'm bringing Greg Lee because Greg Lee did play at right back for Jamaica in that um I think it was a Saudi Arabia game. One of the yeah, games yeah. he played right back and he looked quite competent. Um, I think God forbid that something happened to Lambesique and um, Mr. Javin Brown a warm up and we have to start believing so I'm gonna play good this game. Uh, I think when I bring Joel Latibo here and Lambeck, he says the uh, two right back them. 
Lati Bodir, based on what I've heard on Friday, that um, his documents were prepared and someone looked over it, but it wasn't submitted as yet. And and, and Jory Lati Bodir. Yes. Um, oh. so, so he's not that his process probably have even kicked off. And I'm disappointed in players like that. Because yeah, after so the play the catch alone I'm something I <laughs> wow. Yeah, so he play the catch alone and matching things so already still right now. Yeah, I'm disappointed, bro. That Catalonia game, the moment you went home, you should have been on that, if you're serious. Also, they have someone has contacted John C. Clark Harris, and they must say, John C. Clark Harris looks like him lost all him bird survey ticket, brother. Like, to the man is, like, just not moving the thing along. And we expected that John C. Clark should have been further along in the process based on the energy that he showed how he wanted to play for Jamaica. Yeah. You see what I say? Them say you can't care donkey go water, but you can't make him drink. Like, come on, guys. You know, if you get in a passport, if you don't want a player. Yeah. <laughs> but then again, I don't know. I can't say certain things. I me say it. I hear some of the players. Eh? But any idea? Sometimes some of my players are loyal to the country. Then, but now we have to understand that. So. With Omar Rutchins, I think we'll never cost Omar Rutchins so because youth have it. The youth can go and hold out. So now here, yeah, but the youth born over there, of course, we want to play for England. That's the reality. Yeah, yeah. But some of the players, uh, listen, this is how I look at the whole England born Jamaican saga. You see, there's a threshold where when certain players get to that point, I think that's when reality kicks in for them that they're not going to play for England. And I think that... And that's 25. Old, I think 27 to 30. Uh, because some of them still are hold on to that little hope around 25 and saying they're still young. Because I think 25 is the threshold in football, actually, where if you're not peaking there, you're probably going to have a late burst, but the time span on your career has been shortened either way because of age. No, why I'm going to be patient with Omari Hutchinson, he would have been one of the youngest top talents that we have kept out of England. You see what I say? So uh, yeah. we can give him a little more time. Yeah, Imam, what you mean is? Not the human. That's how it is. English passport to the man. You can say you to your Lambeck, you say, might be a top, top, top uh, right back now. So even maybe England, I look back, you must say, why them never, you know, because sometimes you have early bloomers and late bloomers. And I believe this youth are continue um, being a good right back. So, yes. But, um, interesting to see if the coaching go for a right back, I hear some name get called. Me as a whole game, I see my play right back for him club too. Even though he's a centre back, but you know, so I don't know. Yeah. But do like him have hopes to play for England the same way, you know? Yeah, and, and, and you see, the positions are different. You see, right backs and those kind of positions, wing back positions, uh, when you're building a team, your wing backs doesn't necessarily have to play for marquee clubs because it's the person who gets the job done in those positions. It's not the big names. I think you more go for big names on the attacking end of the football and, and the midfield area and the centre-back areas. You want to have marquee centre-backs and good um, midfield as an attacking player. But you see, win-back, you need, what would they call them players, you know, a player who is functioning in those areas and doing the fundamentals over and over, who is good at repetition. The wing back position is like a factory line. You have to keep repeating the process over and over, knowing how to, to position your body when the winger is coming at you, knowing when to turn the, the, the winger outside or turn him inside, knowing where you have help and knowing where your position is. You have to just keep doing that over and over and over. On the other hand, attacking midfielders and attacking players have the more freedom of doing things unorthodox things and getting away with it. You don't get away with being a bad wing back, brother. You're going to be get shown up on the park. Who was yeah, the three, who, who's the strikers would you take to this court? If you're going to play Jamaica versus Brazil, in Brazil, I think Jamaica should only play one striker because this is not the game where we run out with two strikers up top and 
when them pass off the ball to them one another, when the whistle blow, them no see it back again. I don't believe in having two strikes in another game, they tell you. <laughs> well, yeah, it could not be um, five or four, five, one, or basically four, four, two, but the second striker and basically a play as a camera or something. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have, have Mikel Antonio and Leon Bailey up basically, you know, up there. That would be my forward line still. Okay, so you're going to play Leon Bailey at striker? Or like a Faz 9? Sec- yeah, Faz 9. Like, as we said, Mikel Antonio are the point man. And BL basically a Roman, Roman. Email point at the midfield, and, you know? Mm-hmm. But more the play man the wing against Brazil. Mm. So you really want to start experiment with the team now, Teddy Lee? Like at this point? Then I want to for experiment. No, no. <laughs> oh, I want to for experiment. That's true, that's true, that's true, that's true. That's <laughs> no, true. we have to experiment to see how they how them look against quality teams and no. You know, cause even some maybe argue that maybe Mikel Antonio, twenty twenty six. You know, if he was still on farm and them thing there, so we have to look at younger strikers who can take the place. But we have to focus on right now Brazil. Alright, so you left back. Who are who, who you bring? Amar Bell and who? Cause Greg Lee can go over there, certain. Mm, that's the problem right now because, like, bro, Mafia said. I, I, like we need a left back as well bro because i don't want to take a, a left back from the local league and i want to move away from toxi lawrence brother because yeah, ta- i want to move away um them people them leave um, taxi lawrence and them players and lamar walker them them them, them make me revisit the trauma of the topper era bro <laughs> yeah yeah, when we see but them, man, they go, they... Them up, it, maybe I look at Tyree Mitchell or something. I don't know that, bro. Yeah, I haven't heard anything about that. I haven't heard and Rico, Rico, and I think something they can get Rico in for, you know, from Brentford. I, I think the coach might has might have spoken to Rico Henry. I cannot confirm, but since he's um since he's in the UK, I think that's a play. And since this coach is trying to make sure the team is very compact defensively, I would as yeah. I, 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 I don't know why he wouldn't want to speak to Rico. Henry. And plus, my Ethan Pino could have a partnership already, like left, you know, left, right, left, um, wing back, and even though uh, Mr. Pino could play on the right side of the central defense, but you might Rico used to there on the left. So I think Rico, I think Ethan Pena could have been crucial to get a uh, Rico Henry. But we are saying the same interested. I think we saw an article where Mr. Rico Henry is interested. So I think I just they get the papers. Maybe we don't know, we don't know if his parents are or his grandparents are. Because I'm saying if your grandparents, your documents are kind of hard for fine or something like that. Is yeah. that him, sir? Yeah, and I can't wait for the coach to call out the squad because you see, after the coach call out the squad fans, big up everybody as I said in the comment section. After the coach call out the fans, you're not here. JT talk nothing but more about no player when I have no passport for the rest of the competition. Yeah, yeah, true, true. That was a big distraction, Teddy Lee, for last year. That was a big distraction, brother. Yeah, like, the minute we say new with this sign, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it just met the fans them all over the place. And my man I say, yo, I went John Russell come. I went yeah, some money yeah. come. Yo, me na yes, um, such man get him thing. <laughs> like, bro, bro, like, come on, we have to get back to where we can just be fans again, bro, and break down the team and and work with where we have, brother. Yeah. You see, as soon as this squad call up. I don't want to talk about nobody when I have a passport for play for Jamaica. It's getting annoying, bro. Yeah, because, yeah. you see me, that's even one of the reasons, bro, why I started this channel. Because I didn't want to spend every day beating the JFF either. Because yeah. at the end of the day, bro, I'm a fan of the football. And the JFF, a lot of people don't know, bro. People in power and power structures, it, it, it's not easy to make a power structure just crumble because you have an outside voice. Them people, they structure them thing in a way as well where they create legislation and laws to protect themselves in the job as well. You see me, I say, and the time where we spend, yo, let me say, big up every channel we put on the pressure on the JFF because we have seen results. But at the end of the day, I have to get back to being a fan of Jamaican football, brother. 
And that's why yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm more talk about the players, them more talk about the team. I just can't depend on the JFF wagon every day. Like right now, we're gonna play Brazil. And I, I was one of the persons who said to the fans, too, we have to give the JFF a clean slate. And I have given the JFF a clean slate. And we also have to balance the discussion. Because if the JFF pull off this game where Jamaica play Brazil, I think this is a big one. If the JFF pull this off, it's a big one, guys. Because not everybody gets to play Brazil. It, it, you know, playing Brazil is an honor. It's an honor to play Brazil in football. You know what I mean? So if we get a little Jamaica who is not winning anything, we haven't won a game in forever. You see me? Yeah. If, we, if we play Brazil, we need to appreciate the JFF. So as you said, Teddy Lee, who was the strikers? Because a lot of people, the last show we had, was saying, Bo I saw um, Andre Gray name showed up in 90%. People, fans, drop your, 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 your three strikers in the, in the comment section as we go through who are the three strikers you would bring to play in this friendly international against Brazil and which striker you think will be most effective. I think Mikel Antonio would be the most effective striker based on power and strength against a Brazil. What says you, Teddy? <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, it is clear if we're going to pick four strikers, Mikel Antonio and Shamar Nichols, so I'm going to be the two of them. So I think Jamal Lowe, people say yes, him for play on the wing, but Jamal Lowe, maybe don't carry another forward line. I don't know what you say about that. Are you don't play him as a winger? Oh, Teddy Lee, I said this <laughs> the last show. This team is becoming, it's going to become very difficult for make, you know, in the future, you know. Yeah. This Jamaican team, we're taking it for granted right now. And this is why we say, you see, players, we are asleep on them passport and on them pillar. <laughs> and you get it yet? Give this coach a year, and you might not. You might have to on social media, beg with a campaign for your complaint you for Jamaica. Trust me, because when we start looking for it last year, we would have do anything to get Jamal Lowe. We had yeah, hot yeah. when we hear say Jamal Lowe now come. Right now, we are thinking how to fit Jamal Lowe in the team. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> the only way we could have fit Jamal Lowe right now is not yeah. as a winner, you know. Mm -hmm. Not as a winger. Yeah, so we have to get... Be, as I said, the coach are look defensive. He want play wingers to attack, but he want them to defend. So it's like a Bobby Reed mode. So, Ooh. yeah, I think, yeah. So Jamal, I want to Jamal Lowe normally at least get a goal. So, I, I think Jamal, Jamal Lowe, Lowe. Jamal, Yeah, for Jamal, I think he can play the forward line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would you take Ronaldo C first? A lot of people see a Bush League game a play now. No, uh, uh, here was, so uh, I missed my forward line now be Antonio, Nicholso, Jamal Lua. The third spot, the fourth spot that I am would have played Leon Bale, but guess what? Make him stay on the wing. So make make him go on the wing. But the so Andre Gray, you have Corberk, I have them say something the passport, John C. Clark Harris. Mm. So him theme thing already. So, so I either Andre Gray. Yeah, we don't get Andre Gray right now over Corberg and um Cephas. Oh uh, man, somebody has to say they might bring all whisper. Somebody say Antonio Shamarberg and Whisper. Are you taking Whisper? No, knowing that he because Whisper is in the same boat as a lot of the players, he's not playing football. So you might have, <laughs> so he's up for discussion. Well, as a forward, we could. As, <laughs> I'm not sorry, you know, you know, the fourth place can't him can go to the fourth place because you need a youngster where you, you know. Mm -hmm. So, Corey Burke, we know him, he, who him is already, Andre Gray, you know. But remember, we say at least one go semi final. Oh, Brazil match right about right now, still. But the Gold Cup, at least that one go semi final at the Gold Cup. I believe the squad will not pick against Brazil at that supposed to still will be with World Cup squad. That is my belief still, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So you 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 would you would potentially look at a whisper for this game. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I say here one now. <clears throat> As a future, yes, we don't bring him, but BS Palmerit, 
Andre Gray and get the fourth spot to me. Andre, Andre Gray. Gray. Andre Gray. Yeah, I, I, I still think Andre Gray is a is a is 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 a, is a, is, a, is a brazen player. He tends to be quite aggressive. Um, and he's composed. I, I like composed players, and that's why I think Jamal Lowe should be there. He's very yeah. composed. Those are the soft, subtle touches. Yeah. Uh, when, 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 when other player them just start kick with the ball, people like Jamal Lowe them just want to slow down the game and bring it back to a certain level. So I would bring a Jamal Lowe. Um, whether or not he starts, because I would start a Mikel Antonio up front, Demar Gray on the left. Leon Bailey on the right, Ravel Morris as the attacking midfielder, Jonathan Russell as my CDM, um, Dexter right back, um, Bell left back, and um, Ethan Pinnock and Damian Lowe. That's the team that I'm starting. I'm Blake in goal. Blake in goal is up for discussion. Uh, so, <laughs> hold on. So, Bobby Reed, uh, bench Bobby Reed. Oh my god. So Bobby Reed at this point, bro. The, the only way Bobby Reed starts for me is at right back. <laughs> if, I, if I'm planning to play super attacking football, yeah. I'm starting Bobby Reed at right back. Ewa, ah, Ewa. The team that put out is a good team, but you know me and reason why the coach I'm normally play Bobby Reed. Because as I'm saying, we're great. Now it looks like Dexter is a solid. Dexter Lembis Kiss is a solid right back, so I don't think he might need a like a Bobby Reed for help out or a Leon. So Leon Bailey would end up on the right. So I don't think Leon Bailey have a concern about um, basically helping out. But I think, we, no, I don't like uh, the team that you put up. <laughs> no, me, no, on a serious level. You say if we have two CDMs. Mm. We don't say right, Bailey and Demar Gray on the wing and the foul, we do wicked. But we have put too much pressure on um, Lambert Kissy over there. So if we are going, we don't, too, if the coach have two solid CDMs, you know, at least they don't cover for you um, when Gray or Leon Bailey go up. But um, I'm worried about the attack where you put up. At least Bobby Reed gives support um, with the, the right back, Give you know. Mm. Them people them have beat me in the comment section. They must say JT, a madman. <laughs> Dr. Jive will say JT, you know, deserve it up on YouTube. A pure man is attack. No, can you team that you don't play that against Brazil? If a goal cut me out, but Brazil don't play the team that against. I, I, I would because as, as you also say Teddy, it's time to experiment, bro. This is one of the formations yeah. that we have. This is one of the teams that we have to figure out. Does this work? Because if this works. This should be our team going forward until we we, we, we tweak it. Because if it works for me, Bobby, like the ideal team for me, if Jamaica is playing attacking football in Kankakov, is Bobby Reed at right back, Amari Bell left back, Damian Lowe center back, and, and Ethan Pinnock, and Jonathan Russell right in front of those defenders. Ravel Marissa a bit further up the park, balance him, connecting, making the link between defense and offense. And um, Demari on the left, Leon on the right, Mikel Antonio up top. And um, uh, is that a, and Mikel Antonio? That's a four. And we need one more player, Mikel Antonio up top. And mm, then this is where you could also start a, a Daniel Johnson. And then you have Ravel is playing a little closer to Jonathan Russell. Yeah, cause when we look now, we don't know if this song is away, but DJ no, can't play it on the left. No, I never simply what they say, Teddy. Ah. Uh, no, man, it, like some defensive, like, you know. Because <laughs> I'm still concerned yeah. about defensive, you know, so just that. But you think DJ but, is, a, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a good defender? I think DJ is more um, going forward, give you more going forward. What do you think? Yeah, I'm putting in a few tackles and them thing there, you know, but yeah, we, as we said, we have a problem with the CDM. We just want to know who the coach will bring in if we get a CDM. Car, right? If as we said, we want our Lewis Baker if we get him, I think the only thing I go answer, you know. Can how, John much, how, much that, how much play that McCall out, um, um, Teddy Lee? Let's check this four Bobby Reed and on, on at the back, Jonathan Russell five, Ravel six, Demari and Leon Bailey. Um, eight. Um, how, how much player that? 
Ah, what? And then you call Antonia who up front. So it would be and so are uh, or the potential. You think the coach would go with the, like basically two CDM almost with a Kem, um, Kevin Lambert and Jonathan Russell in front of the defensive line and Ravel Marsa's attacking midfielder. And then you have the uh Demari on the left, Bailey on the right. No, he would probably play Bobby Reed in the in, on the inside then. You play yeah, the, me think, as a, the second striker. No, well, I think this could work. Bobby Reed, because Bobby Reed would give you more help in the middle of the park. Because as you said, yeah. his work is work rate. You could have Bobby Reed play behind the striker and Ravel Morris and Jonathan Russell in the middle. Yeah. 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 That can, yeah. yeah. That can work still. Yeah. I, I think Bobby Reed. So people say Bobby Reed plays everywhere. If Blake uh, Mudhead take him, Bobby Reed can keep goal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, him, this is the thing, you know, bro. Um, Owen, Owen, the thing with the, the way all the team are shaped up right now, it make me keep a forget Bobby Reed, brother. And that's the thing. You see, because Bobby Reed is this utility player. He yeah. plays everywhere for you and gets the job done but he's just not that player who pops up on your radar but he's very important to the team and i keep forgetting bobby reed i keep forgetting bobby reed somebody said we play four five one um yeah 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 that's the formation actually we want to play um um because we against brazil we have to just Man, but I believe I still don't want to get six, Teddy. Me know say so six all right, but in a Jamaican culture, six never all right on the squash no, and the six spots. My dear, don't misquote me. Say all right, all right. What, what, what <laughs> me say? Better we get six now than in the future. You say if we get six, that all right. <laughs> no man, I say <laughs> no man. Six could do. I be say we have to use the Argentina. We get three. So if we get four or something, that no, you know. Uh, but we have to be uh, realistic still, you know, that's the reality still. But if we get six, we're not going to cry due to the coach, basically, some of the players, them, it'll be them are a great first match, you know. And if we get, I think we have some other players there. I just a coach who have to come a back and conference. Call yeah. yeah, we need call a press conference. Yes. We need a like JFF, no, the players, them, but JFF now, because I'm kind of going into it, them are great. We we'll see the articles, them. But it's like they want the coach to come out fully and say what is what. Yes, yes, yes. And I think the coach has basically earned his respect. And I think the coach has now put the JFF in a place where the JFF has to behave like a federation and not yeah. overstep the coach. Because previously, the JFF would have probably just come out and say what they want to <laughs> say. But I think the coach, I let them know, say, I'm the coach and this is what the coaches do and this is what the JFF does. The yeah. JFF need to focus on taking care of logistics and operations and player contracts and everything surrounding the football. Me like the approach. I me like how my, my, uh, Mr. Ricketts and Dennis Chung. As me tell the people, them say, don't make them trick on and think we can get rid of Dennis Chung. If we get rid of Dennis Chung, we are get somebody like uh, the president from Westmoreland. Some man we in there for 20 years and him saying biggest accomplishment is him rent a land and build an office to make a field plan, brother. <laughs> I will tell people from day one when they are question me, ask them if they know who is Dennis Strong. You know, no, we see people are big him up, you know. But Dennis Strong, I want to be credible man, them, you know. So yeah. I think, yeah, I think they will win the next election. I have to realize that. And as we said, we have a need to see the next team who, who they might bring forward. Mm. So at least we can say, all right, no to this current JF. But we can't just want to support people blindly because maybe them would be worse than this administration. Exactly. We exactly. We have to work with the evil way you know right now because I tell people this. The and they might listen to, you know, this might listen to the vlog and they might take time, you know, so, you know, yeah. maybe people are saying because, because election near, as soon as them win and never them going back to the old ways, that people would argue, but I think we as a black as a man go hold them, hold them accountable. Accountable, yeah. accountable, accountable. Mm -hmm. and, and and I think people like Dennis Chung, who has had a good track record in his previous jobs, he has that pressure on himself. He doesn't plan to fail. And that's the person you want in a job like this with a chip on his shoulder to succeed. Is yeah. It?
you, you don't want a man to come in, we start, as them say, Ryan would have said, drop off the brown, the brown envelope. <laughs> 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 you know, we don't want too much of them brown envelope man the back in the thing because a lot of the rift as you saw where people were having problems that Dennis Chung now leg of the money hear them talk eh? you, you ever hear them think they come out of football FA in England deadly the, the, the oh, England man them now leg of the money I so that's so like some election thing a Jamaica where some man you see you get the fertilizer them and the farmer care them and Teddy yeah. Lee leg of the care them yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, as me say, me like project. Yes, me understand sometimes some accountant, you know, do things differently. But if you want money, at least I uh, give sure the, the man who oh, where you want the money for him now, go just give away money blindly. Yeah. You know? So if you need some program, your football program or something, at least you uh, tell you, you know, at least write up why, you know, the man, if you just give the money blindly. You know, I wait the end of Teddy, me, me have a discussion with a family member where me and him basically get into an argument. Like when mm. me, me tell him, say, bro, we, me no want no family member asking me about if I can give them some money. Because the moment you, you, you say money to me, money is synonymous with spending. Yeah. You say, if you come to me, Teddy Lee, and say, yo, JT, may I look for some capital, you know? If you do this and that. Yes, if I'm here, capital, that triggers yeah. the word investment in my mind. Yeah, and yeah. potentially, we're going to talk about me maybe getting some money back. Yeah. You see me, I say, Jamaica, we grew up in a culture where a man say, when a person asks for some money, all a woman say, Jamaica, Teddy, give me some money if you spend, no? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you spend, when a person come to you, Teddy, and say, Teddy, may I look up a piece of capital? To work on this and this yeah. it automatically triggers your mind to start thinking that this person actually have a plan and a yeah. strategy to invest money so that's the same thing with dennis chung like dennis yeah. chung is saying like jamaica is a place where people want you to invest in a them without them having a direction and a blueprint and actually an objectives that they're trying to meet so dennis chung yeah. is saying outlay um outline the things that you want to get done and and the benchmarks you want to reach and then we can disperse these funds and john wall spoke about this on the management and i am sure sport he said the money that fifa is giving for the youth programs fifa has outlined specifically what this money need to be spent on and you know what this take me back to me a one that rotted all of them other money they were fee for old line fee spent upon Jamaica. Where is the results, brother? Yeah, <laughs> you, you see, because FIFA now give you no money without outlining what it's for. So that comes back to where Ryan did a talk about brown envelope. But me no want to get in at the brown envelope. Big up the brown envelope, boss. Them Jamaica versus Brazil. That's what we're talking about. One of the other friendlies that's on the cards is also Honduras. I think, I think this one is a pretty straightforward one. We had the best of Honduras in our past two um, encounters. I don't think Honduras is a, a, is a challenge for Jamaica right now. I don't, I'm not worried. What about yeah. you? Yeah, we're not so worried about Honduras now because I'm a rebuild, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not threatened by the Hondurans. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not worried. But Brazil, Brazil is a game now. I think Brazil takes me back to when Jamaica used to play a Brazil, like in the Gold Cup. I remember seeing Jamaica. I remember a player by the name yeah. of Edmundo. Yeah, man, Edmundo. Yeah, man. All right, you know a player named the um, the Nelson. Nelson. Yeah, man. You, you, see the, you see the plot over in a football, people, where you see the player roll the ball and plot over the football. Yeah. It was a player from Brazil by the name of the Nelson. And the first player we introduced that in a football. Right, boy, so we think of Ronaldinho. That's a Ronaldinho. Remember them? No, man. Ronaldinho, them come see the Nelson. The Nelson, the Nelson was the player. We plot over the football and rocking body and create that delusion there, brother. Yeah. The Nelson and 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 then JJ Okacha 
from Nigeria, then take it also to another level at Bolton yeah. Wanderers and start perfect it a bit more. But the same yeah. plot, plot the way you see Ronaldinho them do, Adi Nels to them, Adi Nels, them time they remember the next right back them, Kafu. Yeah, man, Kafu, yeah. You, you, you see me, I say, them time the Brazil is one of the most balanced team you can find. You see me? And that's where um, Siobhan was, um, yeah, Dinos is a very skillful one. The most um, skillful, um, expensive player. Yeah, people don't remember Dinos to them. So when we see players, see somebody said in the comment there, uh, yeah, man, I didn't to start the plot, man. When you see, brother, remember when we sit that part with TV, brother, with a pick of every grapefruit off a tree if we practice that. I tell me, I tell you, when we used to watch the football, you know, we just run, go to the road after we go try, practice it. All some things when we see Del Piero do. You know, I see, I see some man in Jamaica name, a, call all themselves Del Piero and them thing there. The man them do some things in a football, brother. I say, one of the men who scored the best headers in World Cup history is Patrick Kluivert and Jürgen Klinsmann from Germany. The man, them time, they Patrick Kluivert and Overmars and Dennis Birdcamp and Davis and Sedov in the Dutch team. There, I think they lost in the semi-finals to Brazil that year. You see me, and that's when the World Cup was a little bit more competitive. Um, no, I think the World Cup, it, the, the last World Cup didn't have any energy for me, um, Teddy Lee. It just didn't have the World Cup vibes there to me. It, it just feel like, you know, it was just too scripted, you know. But let me read just a few more comments. Uh, let's see if the fans have anything else about the game. Chris so J. J. Taylor, may I have a yeah. cut here? So thanks for having me here. Yeah, man. Thank you very uh, much for joining me. Up. See you next time. All right. Let me read that. Read a few more comments. Chris Smith said, Leon Bailey, 29 appearances, four goals. Chris Smith, big up yourself. Chris Smith always have the stats, them people. Chris Smith do, does not come on here without having a stat. I just dropped the link. Feel free to join the discussion, guys, if you have a point or you disagree with something that I've said and you want to just basically articulate it in another way. I'm very up for the discussion. Leon Bailey, 29 appearances, four goals, three assists. 68% starting, 11, um, 11 starting, 58, 57% uh, minutes. I don't know, it's a bit jumbled up there. 15% goal participation. Yeah, Marlon is here. Big up yourself, Marlon. Um, yeah, we're talking about the Nelson there. Chris Smith against Mikel Antonio EPL appearances. Let me just throw this up on the screen. Um, 31, 5 goals, 3 assists, 56% starting, 11, 55 minutes, 22% goal participation, um, 1,686 minutes played, conference league, 6 games, 5 goals, 2 assists, 358 minutes played, FA Cup 3 games. I think Chris Schmidt just came in with some stats, big up yourself, Warren West Webster, and big up Bessa, Bessa documentary. Um, big up yourself in other place. Um, let me see if there's any more comments. Guys, tell me what your prediction. Um, I think we will go to the hour mark, so for another 18 minutes. Guys, tell me your prediction on the Jamaica game against Brazil. How much game, how much, what's the scoreline? How much you think it would Jamaica play against, um, 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 um Brazil? How much you think Jamaica? What's the scoreline? Let's talk about the scoreline because um, I think Jamaica could pick up a nice maybe a four-one, four-one from Brazil maybe three-one. If the coach surprises us, it could be a two-nil game or a two-one. But um, if the thing gets away from we, um, Jesus Christ, Warren Webster started off on this footing. Warren Webster go five-two. David go 4-1. All right. So me and David do the same um, mindset as far as this is concerned. Let's read this one. Humble One Media say you so very balanced and open for a good discussion. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. That's the thing, you know, um, um, Humble Media. We want to discuss the actual opinion and the points and not like the person. 
each person here, we don't know each other in real life. We're just out here. This is called, I call this like intellectual sparring. We're just sparring about football opinions. It, this is not personal. You see me as say we're just all fans of the football. 5 2 4 1. Uh, Mr. United said 3 1 Brazil. All right. Julie is, try, Julie is saying that it's supposed to be a bit closer. So, Humble One Media. It's Eurosports, um, so you can go to Eurosports.com. They're the one who has the game scheduled on there for, I think, June 13th in Brazil. Um, nothing has been confirmed by the JFF or by the Brazilian Football Federation. So this is just what we've seen on the website as of today. So that's what we're going off. I, I, I cannot confirm that, but if Jamaica plays against Brazil, this is just what we're just basically summing like summing up potential outcome. So some some of the fans are saying that the game tends to see they might end a bit closer than they than I would expect. Data Nation is saying he thinks it's a two-one game. Tevin Campbell is saying it's a two-one. Jamaica never put a team over my team, brother. No, Tevin, that's the thing that I've recognized about football over the years. I've, I've, I've been so wrong whenever I use my um, emotions when I, on, on, on predicting games. I, really, I realize that when, when, when I'm emotional and I'm like, yo, I'm a side. Because remember, you know, if the floodgates them open up where Brazil score on Jamaica in the first five minutes, and then Jamaica start thinking like, whoa, it's going to be one of these nights where Jesus Christ, a Brazil, we are player. They think you can get out of hand. Or I think Jamaica, however, based on this coach and what I've seen against Argentina, what, I've, what I do like about this Jamaican head coach, though, he seems like he has a strategy how to make it difficult for teams to break Jamaica down. In that Argentina game, that was one of the big takeaways from that game for me. He made it difficult. Though Argentina had chances, Jamaica was a bit tricky for Argentina because if you, some would say in previous games, Jamaica actually scored on Argentina before and we were up in games. But that Argentina team that just won the World Cup, Jamaica made it difficult for them to break down them like Jamaica consistently of how we would expect a dominant Argentina team to break down Jamaica. So I have to give the coach credit on that side of the um, ball where I think he seems to have a way to make things difficult for um, teams to break down Jamaica. So it can be a thing where Jamaica start making it difficult for Brazil and Brazilian players maybe start you know, maybe this is a game where Brazilian players start showboating and start maybe coming out of their shells and start trying to do the whole bonita, like the whole Brazilian football thing. And the clock keep ticking over. And before you know it, it's 70 minutes on the clock and it's nil-nil. And then the coach has to start ringing in the changes to try to get the result. You know, you never know. So hopefully that's a, that's a, a situation that could also happen where the Jamaican coach set us up in a way where we are very difficult to break down. Um, let's hear what Chris Simit is saying. Um, no, Warren website said Brazil plus three goals, in my opinion, if we bring our best by two goals. I think you're right around the right ballpark there. Um, I think you're being very realistic. Um, Warren Webster, um, appreciate that. Um, Chris Simic with some more statistics here on Damian Low MLS appearances one, three minutes played from nine games, Kankakov Championship League, three games, one goal, 270 minutes played. That's Damian Low for you, there, guys. Real baller is saying 2 2, also an excellent opportunity to gauge our standard. And that's why I'm not worried about this game because these are the games that I want Jamaica in. The reason is our worst performance in these games is the, is the bottom end of the worst our team can get. I want Jamaica to raise the threshold of how bad we are. That's how we're going to get better. 
when we play good teams. So our worst performance against good teams will able to get us results against mediocre teams in the region. Think about what I said, guys. We want to set the threshold much higher, and that's only going to happen when we play higher competition. Because if we gauge ourselves, remember, a 2-0 defeat to Brazil, you probably get more information from that game for your team than a 3-0 win over Trinidad and Tobago. Trust me. A 2-0 defeat to Brazil, you might have more analytics that's important for your progress than a 3-0 um, thrashing of a, a Trinidad and Tobago. Because then you played against a team that is not really there yet and you got the results. However, they didn't really challenge you as much. You didn't really come under enough pressure. So you, they didn't really show you what you needed to work on. So you then start operating on a, like a false premise of success where you think your team is actually better than what the team is at the moment. So I think playing these stronger opponents will give Jamaica a higher threshold. So even our worst performance against a lower tier team is good enough to get results when we start competing against the Panamas and those teams in the region. So here we got um, Freedom Vlog FC say if the match play in Jamaica, no, the match would be played in Brazil based on what the website is saying. Um, um, G. Humble One Media suggesting your, uh, your opinion. Why do you think? The coach choose Brazil as a competitor as opposed to Alessa. I hope this is what I'm also saying, Humble One Media. I think for Jamaica to get better, the coach understands that we have to play stronger opponents. This is the only way we're going to raise the threshold of our team. Because if we keep playing lower opponents, you never really can gauge how good your team is when you go up against tougher opponents. So I think the mindset of the coach and the federation, this is also a thing. We want to get the coach and the federation in sync. We want the federation to start understanding for Jamaica to take the next step in football. Our opponents has to match the vision. The opponents has to match the direction that we want to go in as a nation. We want to start playing the Germanys. We want to start playing the England. We want to start playing the Belgiums. Those are the teams that we want to see Jamaica name call next to. We want to start seeing highlights popping up of a Jamaica 2-2 draw with a Belgium. You know what I mean? A Jamaica beating an Austria, you know, beating a, a Netherlands. Those are the competitions we want. And then we can start saying Jamaica has really taken that next step in the world of football. So I, I think the coach wants to raise the profile and potentially raise the threshold for where our level is as a country um, when it comes on to football. Data Nation say he took a, not a strong team against Argentina and the result was not too bad. So I don't think... Yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Data Boss. And if you looked at the Argentina game, it wasn't our strongest team. The Argentina game wasn't our strongest team and we competed valiantly we had a valiant we we put out a valiant effort out there against argentinians so and i think this gold cup and this um upcoming fifa window might be the strongest jamaica team we've seen in the past decade i think this gold cup and this summer might be the the strongest team we ever seen on paper at least because that's another thing that's up for discussion we also learned last year that the game isn't played on paper. You actually have to go out there and show your stuff on the day. You see what I said, Dr. Joyful? I have to read Dr. Joyful comment first, you know, before I put it on the screen, because you never know where I'm going to write. He writes some things more time. All right, so now it makes sense. Yes, I'm saying Jamaica is among the top four teams in Kanka Cup. Um, the Mexico match proved that. Okay, so we will... Um, yeah, yes, um, we will put that one up. Data boss, I have heard nothing about Max Aaron. Um, I have no idea about him. And uh, one thing I said again, Data boss, you see, after the coach called a squad here, please, Data boss, 
make we just get back on the wagon and start support the player them where we have and who in the team going forward when the coach called the squad because my feel the last year us as fans including myself and the frustration it disrupted the energy and the support and the team because every minute we did want a new player to come in, in and you see what i said may i include myself i'm a fan because I also watch all the Reggae Boys programs and support all the channels as a fan. And I was a part of that whole mess of just wanting these players in. And But now I'm seeing like we're shaping up as a team. I want to support the team and work with where we have and who have them passport going forward. Um... Yes, Owen, Owen, the game is confirmed. The website, I don't know where they got it from, and it seemed to be a credible website. They have a whole bunch of other fixtures, and I think Brazil is supposed to even play Nicaragua, I think. So it would even make more sense that it seems like Brazil would be playing two teams that's in the same group. I don't know the correlation to that. Marlon Nelson said, Brazil, Jamaica record, Jamaica one draw and 2 one nil. Yeah, yeah, Jamaica hasn't played a, a lot of encounters against Brazil, um, but we need to play them more. I am a bit curious because the coach did not approve of the Argentina matchup of the Argentina level. I think in that situation, Humble Media, is because the, the coach actually, though he was um, employed as a coach, he actually didn't supposed to start the job yet. Remember, and come on. It's like you start a job, humble boss. You start work at, um, say you start work at Tesla and you supposed to be a detail, the, 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 the detail man. And as you reach, Elon must say, yo, humble media, uh, you more want to start make the, the, the battery them, you know. More you start make the battery them for the Tesla and more you fit up the interior and more want you start doing testing on the, uh, on, on different things with the car. You're going to say, Jaja. Mr. Elon Musk, I think I wash your camera, come myself for wash your car. Oh, yeah, give me this video. So I think it had to do one of my crazy analogies again. I thought it was because of the first game, the coach didn't expect to be baptized um, um, on his first in his first game playing against Argentina. So that's understandable. No, that he has the team and he knows what he has, and based on what he's doing now and the scouting, I think he must be in a better place and would be way more confident taking up a challenge against a Brazil right now. Um, Warren Webster said, I am praying for a great result and I will take a Bob Marley, but it's hard to shut out Brazil. We have to bring a, a bring our A team, yeah, man. You see, these games, bro, based on what the coach showed me against Argentina, I'm getting more confident, guys. I'm getting more and more confident. And one thing I've said is um, when, 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 when um, the coach came in, that this coach will, uh, based on his track record, he will always set up his team and make it difficult for other teams to break him down. No, I just want to touch a little bit more. I just, I just, I know this show before I end. I just want to talk a little bit about Tyreek McGee. I haven't really jumped on to the Tyreek McGee train or anything like that. Guys, I know a lot of people are saying this is a step down for Tyreek McGee. Jay Taylor, I'm saying this on Sports Prophecy right now that this is a blessing in, this is a blessing in the skies for Tyreek McGee. Tyreek McGee going to a USL club is a blessing in the skies. And I want you to look at it from this perspective. I know that Tyreek McGee is a, a marquee player from Jamaica College, played his football at Harborview Football Club, went on to Cassiopeia. However, he did not get enough playing time. But I also understand the difficulties that Tyreek McGee potentially ran into. People have to also consider the fact that he played under three different head coaches. Each time a head coach come into a team, you have to prove yourself again. You were probably this coach's favorite. You're no longer. This other coach don't know you. You just see some man line up and he must say, yeah, yeah. Tyreek McGee now playing at a USL club, he will get more playing time. 
Not only that, if Tyreek McGee has improved his game in Belgium, now is the time to show us that he's actually improved because now he's going to a lower competition. The only downside to this is I think that the USA turn our players into robots. The USA turn our players into robot footballers. And with a skillful player like Tyree McGee, Tyree McGee needs to express himself on the park. And another thing that Tyree McGee needs to work on, he needs to be more aggressive on both ends of the football. Tyree McGee needs to show more effort in his defensive play he's a bit too passive as a player he goes in and out of the game too often and he pops up as a marquee player but that doesn't really work anymore no Tyreek McGee going to a USA USL club also up his chances of getting a call up for the Jamaica football team hear me out before you call me crazy no, when the coach called these local camps, it's much easier for Tyreek McGee to fly in from the United States for the coach to take a look at him than fly Tyreek in from Europe where he's sitting at the, on the bench at Cassiu Penn. So this has now helped Tyreek McGee in a way for me to actually get much closer to get a senior call-up again. Because when the local team is called, if Tyreek McGee was potentially in the USL, he could have been in that Trinidad game because he's just a stone throw away from Jamaica in Colorado. So now I think Tyreek McGee has to actually show that he's actually that good. You see what I mean? He's that good. And everything that he has learned in Europe, he's supposed to look better in the USL. If Tyreek McGee goes in the USL now and end up back in Jamaica playing football, we can start fling the nail them in at the coffin because that's it. It's over and done. So Tyreek McGee has hit rock bottom of his football career now, but going to the USL, it doesn't get any lower than that. He needs to make sure the USL is, is, is his rock bottom, that it cannot get lower than that. Because if he ends up back in Jamaica, Tyreek McGee can call it a day on getting back overseas into a big club. You don't just leave Europe. If you look at any analytical graph and you start trending downwards, it's very hard for the market to rebound unless something amazing happens and events that happen to change the, 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 the situation. So um, Tyreek McGee should look at this as a positive you're going to be getting playing time. I don't give a, I don't care how much you're there, Manchester United are train, brother. If you're not playing football and proving what you have learned in the game, you are just another squad player. So Tyreek Magino has the chance to be a player on the pitch. What he has learned, he can now go out there and exercise that and implement that. However, I am worried about Tyreek McGee now getting coached by those coaches in the U.S. Because I think a lot of the U.S. coaches are a bit P.E. style coaches. What do they call them coach? A gym coach. I think they coach very uh, robotic. It's, uh, you know, it's not. I don't think they leave a lot of room for expression in the way those U.S. coaches coach. So I'm a bit worried when it comes on to that. That's the only downside. But Tyreek McGee needs football, brother. Tyreek McGee needs to be playing football and he needs to be playing now. And I think his agent recognizes that Tyreek, though this is a free transfer, don't look at the money. Don't worry about that. Look at the fact that you can redeem yourself, re-energize yourself and get back into the discussion of football because it doesn't matter how good you are brother me never see a coach come to a match and say yo i'm scouting give me that player that will sit down on the bench every game you ever hear a coach come scout a player and say give me that youth that will sit down on the bench every game you don't know what him look like you don't know how good him be so tyree mcgee going to be out there on the field he's now also going to have tape because tyree mcgee doesn't have any tape he doesn't have any new tapes on him from Cassiopeia. He played around six or seven games in all those seasons he's been there. 
So now being in the USL, Tyreek McGee finally gets an opportunity to prove himself. So there should be no more excuses. No Tyreek has to put him put his feet on or put him foot on the gas. Then Jamaican style, him have to put him foot on the gas. And Tyreek McGee, you need to you need to get into the gym, brother. You need to bulk up. You, Tyreek McGee, you need to live for one of them seat there a McDonald's or something, brother. Just start stuff your face with some burger or something, brother. You need to put on some weight and turn that into muscles or something. I encourage unhealthy eating. But Tyreek McGee, however you get it done, you have to bulk up a little bit, brother. Because you, it's just, yeah, or you need to get into some fight. They need to put you into a pen with a pit bull and make you, you know, anyone on the win, come out, come play, brother. You see me? <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> J.S. Gouda said, don't do that. <laughs> yeah, man, we take what that one there, J.S. Gouda. But yeah, Tyreek McGee just needs a little bit more aggression. Imagine Tyreek McGee being more aggressive with his skill set. Tyreek McGee. Tyreek McGee would have been an amazing player. I just think he's just a little bit too passive. He's just a little bit too passive. We need to see Tyreek McGee a bit more engaged, especially on the defensive end of the park. Like Tyreek McGee, you need to go in and tackle more time, brother. Even if you don't get the football, just go bust a tackle, go fall somebody down, do something. You just look like you're just jogging around it on the park. It's it's you know coaches that will just make coaches start look on the clock and saying what listen the way you're playing Tyreek Maggie based on the last couple of games I see you coaches are sure that you're their first change you're the first substitution brother if you, what makes a coach keep you out there is seeing that you're ready to fight for it if a coach even if you're having a bad game they see that you're ready to go for it look at the game with Omari Hutchins against Trinidad Though Omari Hutchinson was struggling that game, a lot of people didn't see that Omari Hutchinson was working very hard on the defensive end of the football. He was work, he was tracking back all the time, helping his wing backs. That's what you need from Tyreek McGee. We need Tyreek McGee to be more engaged in the game. You see me? I say he cannot just keep jogging around out there and being this um you know, uh, what them call it now. One of them, yeah, you can't be a Lamborghini out there, brother. You have to start move like some Jamaican robot car where you fly around some corner with all your head out of the car and some people fly over some bush and sitting. You need to be a little more risky in your game, Tyreek Maggie, because if we didn't think you're talented, we wouldn't even bother discussing you, bro. That's another thing where we need Jamaican players to know. If we didn't think that you had the potential to be anything or to be good, we wouldn't even spend time talking about you. Right now, it is 1.30 European time, and I'm on stream talking about you right now, Tyreek McGee. If I didn't think you were worth it, bro, I wouldn't even have this, have this discussion. This stream wasn't even about that. But I didn't want to make an actual video because everybody has made the video about it, but I see that most people are looking at it um, from a negative side. And I'm trying to, this is why I always try to look at things from all different angles. Though it might seem negative in hindsight, you see what I'm saying? Um, though it might be seem negative in hindsight, I didn't, guys, I don't even know. I'm a hand pressed the thing. When we see Mr. Dr. Jai will have whisper over hype. You know the people them. I don't talk about whisper a lot on this show because we pass through that thing there. We don't I only want to discuss whisper as a football player. I don't want to talk about the things around him again. We pass that because we don't want people to say we bad mind and thing. We move away from that. But yeah, as I was saying, it's the same concept as I said that we all can look through the same window. Every morning we wake up in the same house, but you see something else and we look through the same window is what a, your perception tells you. And what I see in this for Tyreek McGee is, I think that um, Tyreek McGee should look at this as a way to rejuvenate his career and basically get back into the top flight leagues. Because let's 
people can say Tyreek McGee is not good, but if somebody didn't think that Tyreek McGee was good, um, wasn't good enough, he would have never end up in Belgium. Where is all those players in Jamaica that we say is better than Tyreek McGee? They are playing in the JPL. So we also have to give the young man credit. And a lot of us don't know the challenges that Tyreek McGee faced over there in Europe. Remember, you know, this is a young man that grew up in Jamaica all his life. Him having friends, him having family and everything. And then you just throw him a Europe where he has no friends or no family amongst a whole bunch of other people from different countries and different cultures. He now needs to adapt. He now needs to get out there and get playing time. These things can be a bit challenging and not everybody handle these changes very well. So it takes a certain of certain level of mental toughness to get those things done. Marlon said, JT, Maggie type of players are not around anymore. Players are looking... Uh, are looking for a two-way attack. Exactly. That luxury midfielder doesn't exist anymore. The, the, the same energy is similar like Bobby Reed. Bobby Reed gives you a consistent play. The same energy Bobby Reed gives you forward, going forward, is the same energy Bobby Reed gives you on defense. And that's why Bobby Reed is at Fulham. A lot of people would say that Bobby Reed is not that good, but he's at Fulham, you see what I mean? And that's why Bobby Reed is at Fulham because his work rate on both sides of the football, it equals out. You see me? A Tyreek McGee, he gives you flashes of brilliance on the offensive side of the ball, but he's, he's very weak on the defensive side of the ball. We remember in the Gold Cup where he made that one move in the midfield and he basically opened up the whole... Costa Rica defense, and we start, whoa, Tyreek McGee, that's what we need from him. But he goes in and out of the game. Tyreek McGee reminds me of a player like Riquelme. If you remember Riquelme from Argentina, very skillful player in the center of the park. But Riquelme, them, when you see Riquelme, them finish a game or ring out them jersey, brother, you can catch a bucket of water out of it. Cause them man, they are move, them are run, them are put in the work. Tyreek Maggie come off of the field. Tyreek can't even hang up back in jersey in a the in in a, in a, the, in a the wardrobe, in a the dressing room, cause it's fresh and pristine. His work rate is not that high. Tyreek Maggie, you have to get more aggressive. You have to turn up the work rate, my brother. We believe in you. You have the skills, dog. You are one of the most skillful players Jamaica has produced in the last 10 years, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Your touches on the football. The first time I saw you for, Jama um, for Jamaica, I thought, whoa, I love how this player touches the football. You know, he simplifies the game. Tyreek McGee also have a little thing that Leon Bailey is missing from his game. Tyreek McGee knows how to simplify the game. Tyreek McGee doesn't hang on to the football if it's not necessary. He's very good at that. Let me just touch on some of the good things about Tyreek McGee. But the difference with a Tyreek McGee and a Leon Bailey, Leon Bailey is more aggressive. And what Leon Bailey lacks defensively, he makes it up going forward. Leon Bailey is aggressive. When Leon Bailey is on the day, taking it down the flank, he put fear into defenders. He's aggressive. His time in Germany, Leon Bailey is feared. So he doesn't really have to do that on the defensive end. But you have seen Leon Bailey improve that side of his football this season as to where his work rate increased on the defensive end. I saw Leon Bailey tracking down players all the way back to his own six-yard box to where he they called a penalty on him a couple of games ago before he got injured and they overturned the penalty. And that was due to Leon Bailey tracking all the way back to make the tackle. So even Leon Bailey has recognized that the game has changed. He's no longer just the winger that you're waiting on to take it 
down the field and take on defenders. Leon Bailey knows he has to work on the football. But I have to say, Leon Bailey has improved this season. And Tyreek McGee, take a, a, a page out of that book and get better. Guys, remember to hit the subscribe button. Um, we have com come to the end of the show. Two minutes and 13 seconds. And we will do another show to... Um, no, let me see. Uh, two hours and 13 minutes and four and, and 13 seconds. <laughs> That's over it. Yeah, people, we have reached that time of the show, and I will be back tomorrow. I have another good show lined up tomorrow. And guys, I will be dropping a podcast on YouTube that's exclusive to the channel. It will be audio led, but this podcast will be um, there will be no visual. It will just be audio on the podcast section of the channel. But this podcast will be interviews of coaches from Europe and coaches from the United States and different football players um, where we'll put out these short podcasts and just let people hear about different perspectives on the game and different arguments so people understand that football is a wider sport. Um, Right now, as I said, I was speaking to a player a few weeks ago on the train, and he was saying that we we're talking about the number nine position. And he's saying that in, um, in Denmark, in Europe, coaches, uh, the last thing that coaches were discussing that there's a shortage of out and out number nine. And so in Denmark, at the youth program level, they're trying to know um, implement a thing where they just zoom in on basically training players to play the number nine position because there is basically a deficit at the number nine position. And if you, it's really, when I, I, he made me really look around and I'm like, that's just a fact. There's no real true out and out number nine anymore. It's these little makeshift number nines. It's like you use one next player and make him a number nine. So, those are the kind of discussions as well we want to talk, we have, and bring that to the world. Yeah, the calling thing, I have to figure out how the calling thing is going to work, uh, Mr. United, because as I said, as you know, in my, I, I do music production, and my things that I'm using, I'm using the Apollo Twin, and it doesn't work with the phone call thing. And so I, I, I have to probably get a mix, mixer or some other things for work that out um, at some point. But we're going to sort that out. I just started the channel and each day I'm trying to improve it and look at how I can get better. Um, I'm still, you know, a very young to this thing. However, I have gained a lot of experience working with Ryan on at Elite Sports TV because Ryan, working over there with Ryan, have learned how to deal with the fans and learn how to deal with different comments and stuff. And I've basically learned how to kind of control my emotions as well, too. Because before, we used to just get caught up in some discussion. People just say some things and trigger you. But gaining the experience now, I kind of understand that, listen, you know, this is how we want to do it. But I also want to create an environment on this channel where we discuss the opinion of the person and not the actual person himself. So we don't, we don't want to get personal over Yasha, brother. Because none of us, a lot of us don't know each other in real lives. So we don't want to like, I, I, I tell a man about him mad and them thing there. We don't want to do that, bro. We can say, yo, just like a man said earlier, J. Taylor, that opinion that you just said was garbage, that Brighton was one of the team that has the best press in football. But then Chavon came on the show and said even Pep Guardiola stated that Brighton is a better pressing team than Manchester. And the person, I saw that the person in the comment section said, yeah, I take back my comment. And no, I, I didn't even know that. So you see, that's how it goes. It's, it's the opinion that we should discuss. We don't want to come in and I tell a man, say, I'm an idiot and I'm a clown. Him. No, that, but bless up to everybody from Dr. Joyful, Mr. United, um, Brando, Stefan, right? Big up yourself, man. You were probably one of the first people them were ever drawing one of my life, them. So big up yourself. Humble One Media, Duane Thompson, um, let me see, Fabian Full, 
there we have um Marlon, Warren Webster, Yemen, yeah, big up the reggae boy fans, them detonation. Oh god, Chris Smith, everybody in the house, man. And until then, thank you guys. Remember to hit the like and subscribe button. Just hit the like button on your way out and just give the video some visibility. So all the fans who didn't get a chance to catch the show, they can see the show at a later time. So thank you guys again. Until then, have a great um, Thursday. It's a, it's a holiday over here tomorrow. It's a public holiday. So that's why I'm doing a show tonight. So we can sleep well and sleep good. And then we do a show tomorrow night again and put out some more content. See you guys. Big up, Real Baller. Big up yourself, Meji. Big up yourself. No respect, peace, and love to everybody. Outside, out.